I personally take too much time to do my makeup, to do my hair, to get dressed, to just simply roll around in mud with a pig. Guess in one day you'll be coming different. Where's the consistence? Gotta find a way to get commitment. Should I call you out? Or should I just let it go? Could do without you keep calling. said how does it feel to be doing better than the people who react to you thank you taylor for the um super chat i appreciate it um well better in what sense in the sense of like weight loss if you gaze long enough into an abyss the abyss will gaze back into you this quote has appeared quite often in popular culture it basically implies that what you observe can rub off on you. Nothing quite illustrates this, like watching communities on the internet that revolve around what people have labeled as lol cows. In this video, we will go over a certain community that revolves around discussing the messy lives of fat women who broadcast themselves on the internet. This community is often referred to as Hater Nation. Hater Nation specifically revolves around two women on the internet, obese YouTuber Amberlynn Reed and other obese, I'll bet slightly less obese YouTuber, Foodie Beauty. Before we go further, let's talk about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. If you don't know what a VPN is, it basically helps users make their internet use more secure, helps you stay anonymous, and helps get you around blocks and access to censored sites. If you don't have a VPN, then everything you do can be seen by your internet provider, which opens your data up to being sold. And not only that, it opens you up to many other security risks. With ExpressVPN, you can help prevent all of this. And if you're paranoid about doing anything ever, like me, it can be a reassurance to have an extra layer of security. But not only that, you can use it to access different versions of Netflix. For example, I like to use my VPN to access Canadian Netflix, where I can access most of the Studio Ghibli films that I don't have access to in the United States. It's awesome. I like Castle in the Sky, cause the song in that movie, it's dope. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box below, expressvpn.com slash McFly. Again, expressvpn.com slash McFly. So some background on Amberlynn Reed. Amberlynn Reed is a once near 600 pound YouTuber who started their fail the weight loss journey in 2013. There are tons of videos going over the sideshow that is Amberlynn Reed's channel. But what is important here is that people really dislike her. There are accusations of her falsely accusing her ex of horrendous things. Though, in my opinion, that is a he said, she said scenario that I don't feel comfortable getting into. Allegations that she is not the best pet owner and mostly just claims that her constant lies about her diet and failed weight loss attempts, anger, and in many people's eyes, gaslight her viewers. Next, meet the other focus of this community, Foodie Beauty. She is a near 400 pound Canadian YouTuber who films herself eating on camera and oftentimes flatulates while she works. <laughs> she, like Amberlynn Reed, is another sideshow for this community to watch and gawk at. There are other fat girls as well that this community focuses on. These girls include Amy's Life Journey and Life by Jen, among others. Now, before we get into the meat of the video, which focuses on the insanity and the downfall of the community, let's take a brief moment to look into the history of reactions on YouTube. The most notable reaction I can recall on the platform that is YouTube was in 2011, with a YouTuber named Nutty Madame. This interesting looking woman filmed herself obnoxiously reacting to a Twilight trailer, which resulted in she, herself, becoming a spectacle on the internet. Next, we go to when reaction channels had their first downfall. Sometime in 2015, there was a lot of people reacting to others' content and getting quite a lot of views. The most notable of the people doing this was a YouTuber named Jinx Reloaded. Jinx would end up becoming criticized by famous YouTuber iDubs in an episode of his series, Content Cop, thus destroying the popularity of reaction videos for years to come. There have been reaction channels such as Fine Bros throughout the years. Also, another one I'd like to note that 
received a lot of controversy recently was one named Susie Liu. But reaction channels kind of got kind of a renaissance with smaller creators in this here Hater Nation community. I'd say the first person to somewhat popularize reaction of fat girls on the internet was a small creator by the name of Howdy Cameron. At least he was the first one I found. He is also the first victim of Kiwi Farms in this community. Kiwi Farms is a gossip website I talk about often on this channel. He, after making many successful reaction videos to fat women on the internet, turned around and melted down telling others watching the fat girls that he is better and more handsome than them. Actively look on Kiwi Farms, which is literally just, as I mentioned before, a forum website in which people just hate on Anne-Boleyn Reed, they just hate on her just because they want to feel better about themselves. These two people are ultimately sad, and I don't care about their arguments because I do not want them subscribed or even watching my content. His channel hasn't really recovered since he ceased reacting to Amber Lynn Reed and Foodie Beauty. Eventually, others began reacting to fat women as well. And so, let's meet our modern day haters. First is Charlie Gold. Charlie Gold is the largest hater in terms of subscriber size. She will be the main focus of the video, as she is kind of the Regina George of the anti-hater nation. She started her channel in 2016, but I do believe her older videos about her weight loss have been privated. That isn't weird to me, people private videos. But the first videos on her channel were ones that detailed her weight loss struggles, how she's lost weight, and even telling the abusive story of her childhood. As a watcher, I actually enjoyed hearing her stories, and I really empathized with Charlie, and thought she was great at speaking. Her joining Hater Nation will happen later in 2019, and I will elaborate about her beginnings in the hater sphere in a bit. Other channels include Michael B. Petty, a reaction channel that mostly reacts to Amberlynn Reed. His commentary is humorous, but oftentimes very cutting and mean. 600 pound woman who eats nothing, who's deep throating chicken kebabs and baselining Panda Express orange chicken every night. I would argue that it has more to do with her diet and her size than drinking water at a certain pH level. He is often considered the pioneer of fat girl commentary in the YouTube sphere. Zachary Michael, who also runs a reaction channel, though he has recently ventured from reactions. His reactions tend to be less mean and petty and more lighthearted and goofy. Y'all, I really don't think I realized what I was getting myself into with that video. On program situation, she does reactions to overweight women while also relating it to her struggles as a large woman and vlogs her eating habits, which I might add, has gotten her into some commentary drama as of late for her food choices. The life of a free spirit, or Callie. She is friends with Charlie Gold and reacts to various online videos, and likes to pride herself on showing receipts while she flips her fan. She also has a lot of interesting live streams. She ghetto, she loud. Her eyebrows, her busted wigs. The YouTube underground, or Yaba. She's a redneck. It is glorious, people. It is a glorious day. A glorious day of another cycle from Chantel. Mm -hmm. John's Peanut Gallery. This reactor has the voice of Tommy Pickles after five packs of cigarettes. I don't like how most reaction channels do not respect Chantel and Amberlynn. Yes, I say mean things. I surely do. I say honest, blunt things. She also causes a lot of drama within the community by holding people up to a higher standard in reactions. But that also causes her to defend some questionable stuff. Young Dumb Honeybun. She's obviously the Stacy of the reaction channels. Her reactions to Amberlynn Reed are some of the nitpickiest I've ever seen. Sometimes I'll just get up to walk around my island in my kitchen or walk down the hallway and really appreciate her telling me, you know, my kitchen island, my $6,000 chair, my whatever, whatever. I just feel like it's a little bit inappropriate and a little bit like a small you to her audience. Chikara Transformations. She does commentary as a bodybuilder with a fitness focus. She isn't really a part of Hater Nation and often does her own thing. There are more, like Kicking Geese, Cherry Berry Weight Loss, One Vlog Away, DC Media Girl, Shaquana Jefferson, Gaining Ground, and countless of others. It's a big community. If you want to see commentary on messy fat girls on the internet, you have countless of options. 
So why are we talking about these people? They are the ones who point and laugh at the sideshow, much like yours truly. Well, the thing is, the drama and insanity that they have displayed has become more interesting than the attractions they talk about. This is a typical rise and fall story, this time with a community. I can't pinpoint exactly when the community started being big on YouTube. Previously to reaction channels, there were compilations and such of Amberlynn Reed videos, YouTube poops, and a small audience would come to watch. But as for reactions and personality behind the channels themselves. Well, I'd say, at least to me, it started with a video from YouTuber Michael B. Petty. The video was entitled, Face of a Hater, and consisted of Michael B. Petty telling why he turned from a fan of Amberlynn Reed, cheering her on in her journey, into a quote-unquote hater. It's a good video. He does this weird thing where he takes the meme food that Amberlynn Reed eats and dresses up to try and summon her. It's f***ing amazing and creative. Orange chicken, please bring me your power. Cheesecake Factory, I call upon thee, I need your power. Texas Roadhouse Salad Bar, you have filled me your whole entire existence, I need your power. This is really stupid. Less than a month after the release of this video, the gossip forum Kiwi Farms created a thread to discuss the videos created by others about Amberlynn Reed titled, Fan Made Videos Plus Hater Nation. A lot of Hater Nation has an issue with the gossip forum Kiwi Farms. They are a useful source for some information, but it's essentially a website full of absolute free speech, resulting in some unsavory things from some of the users. Not only are they useful in the documentation of the meltdowns we will discuss in this video, but they are also a key player in antagonizing the members of Hater Nation. The biggest hater, Charlie Gold, would join the sphere June 30th, 2019, with a video titled Amberlynn Reed, colon, Manipulator or Delusional. The video skyrocketed in views compared to her previous ones. This video was your typical hater video and not too harsh. Just talking about why she dislikes Amber, Charlie will get harsher later on, but in this video she expressed sympathy for the morbidly obese YouTuber. After this, Charlie would begin reacting to Amberlynn Reed, and in her reactions she would continue to relate Amberlynn's struggles to her own. Charlie would be a success in contrast to Amberlynn Reed's weight loss failures, but over time, Charlie got kind of mean. That wasn't a problem at first though. A lot of Hater Nation is mean. Michael E. Petty is way harsher than Charlie. But Girl, you went after this man's weight, you went after his size, and I'm not gonna even get into the fact that like, there's no on this earth that can imp imp that can penetrate those beef curtains. Like, I'm not gonna even begin to fathom how giant that must be. I mean, before, BB must be living it up over there, not being able to get through. What really helped Charlie's growth was, again, her being a success in her weight loss in comparison to Amberlynn Reed. On August 17th, 2019, she would get the attention of popular health YouTube channels with a video titled The Darker Side of Obesity, where she breaks down over her struggles with her health due to her unhealthy habits. In this video, she also emphasizes that she doesn't believe she's better than Amberlynn Reed. And I'm not gonna sit up here and make it seem like, oh, I'm better than her. No, I'm just making a be better decisions for my life. You know, that's all it is. Do I want this girl to pass away? Of course not. Do I want her to go down the dark path that I went down? Of course not. I would never wish that on anyone. After this, she would continue to react to Amberlynn Reed, critiquing her and getting quite nitpicky. But in the last, like, five months or so, it's been bad. So I started doing a lot of research. Turns out Google. that for me, because I did test it, and Tumblr. I really want to document this, that water with lower pH balances is what is causing me to have heartburn. At first, I was like, pH balance. can't be that simple, because I thought something was wrong with me. Not I have balances. been drinking which again is not unlike some other people in the community. I'm not saying Charlie is specifically in the wrong here, but the difference is that she started her channel to be a weight loss journey and often compared herself to the women she critiqued. And this is why I say be better than Amberlynn and I. I'm not taking myself out of the equation because I did eat myself to 400 pounds. I did eat myself to being housebound. I did that. Yet, as early as August 2019, it seemed like she had just begun to attack other women's sizes who had similar struggles to her own. 
She's just a 600 pound sodium filled troll. This would get worse over time, especially with the introduction of Foodie Beauty. Not only that, she had a larger platform than any other person in the subgenre of YouTube before, due to networking with inspirational fitness channels. So, she had the backing of these large channels while saying things like, Thank you to Lexington and then drive your fat two hours back home. On August 29th, 2019, she went on the large fitness channel, Every Day Fitness, to talk with the owner of the channel about herself and her journey. This would most likely be a key factor in skyrocketing her to over 100,000 subscribers, as she also got featured on an even larger fitness channel, Obese to Beast, about two weeks after this. Charlie became the antithesis to Amber Lynn, and everyone really seemed to like her. Amber Lynn Reed never responded to Charlie's pokings at her. Amber Lynn allegedly makes about 10,000 a month from people hate watching her low quality vlogs. She has better things to do than pay attention to the growing community rising against her, like eating dry pasta. I am a very dry girl. <laughs> that sounds wrong. While Amber Lynn Reed didn't poke at the hater nation bear at this time, none other than foodie beauty herself did. And on September 8th, 2019, Foodie Beauty posted a community post about Charlie Gold's channel in defense of Amberlynn Reed. Foodie Beauty, aka Chantel, wrote in this post, This channel is ridiculous. This content creator basically reacts to every single thing Amberlynn Reed does in every video. She is an obese woman, highly opinionated of another obese woman's struggles. She reacted to my video as well, saying I bring it on myself for talking about my dingleberries and TMI, ETC. I think you are confused. I don't care about what people think about my dingleberries. What I have a problem with is you profiting off of Amberlynn Reed, like thousands of others, when you are obese too. I need to take a seat. I would rather talk about TMI than be a hypocrite and base my channel off of someone else. In today's video, she thanked her followers for 60k subscribers. You should be thanking Amber Lynn for those subs and views. Just a few months ago, your own content was getting you a couple thousand views, and the minute you started talking about Amber Lynn, your views went up. Your channel is one of a kind, so original. Fat girls should not have opinions on the journey and struggles of another fat girl when you are still obese yourself. Just because you lost a bit of weight doesn't mean your own struggle is finished. Of course, I will get so much hate for this post, but I really could care less. I already get so much. What is a bit more? This is my opinion. That same day, Charlie Gold responded to Foodie Beauty in video form. I think Foodie Beauty fighting back against those in Hater Nation was the first straw in Charlie Gold getting meaner. Don't get me wrong, Foodie Beauty is gross, and I don't like her as a human. And I don't mind Charlie Gold insulting her, for the most part. But in this response, she refers to Chantel as a pig. What I won't do is continue to do the same thing. I may have slip ups, but what I won't do is be trapped. This is a trap that this big toddler set out and uh, that's not something I'm gonna engage in. I personally take too much time to do my makeup, to do my hair, to get dressed, to just simply roll around in mud with a pig. And speaks on how she is above her. I have nothing for you. This will be the only time I address you because I want you to see what it looks like to be grown to be responsible, to be honest, to be transparent, and to be respectful of a community that is supportive of me. It was a decent response to the community post against her. Not only did Charlie Gold respond to this post, but Michael B. Petty did as well. You're already mad at her because she is fat too, and she has an opinion on you. So Chantel, let me know, what is the BMI range to be able to talk about the dumb shit you do on camera? I can guess other channels of smaller subscribers also responded too, all telling Foodie Beauty she's wrong and bad in her defense of Amberlynn Reed. It seems to me to be a bit of a dog pile, but an approved dog pile, because everyone, including myself, found Foodie Beauty to be deplorable. Nowadays, there is criticism of this reaction to Chantel defending herself and fellow fat girls. There's nothing in here to me that sounds so bad that it warrants. Charlie Gold making so many videos about her. She basically stood up for Amber Lynn and stood up for herself and kind of called Charlie out for her content and Charlie took that and ran with it. 
And it's just a bit interesting because in the past she has said that she would only address Chantel once and leave it at that. After this, she would continue to mostly react to Amberlynn Reed in her videos. Her views doing great due to the boost. Not only was this popular on the internet, but reactions from Zachary Michael and Michael B. Petty also were doing well, oftentimes reaching more views than the original content they were reacting to. Don't get me wrong, I'd rather watch Zachary Michael gagging at the sight of Foodie Booty talking about nasty stuff than I'd want to watch that without the reaction. What is going on? The next person to come to attack Charlie Gold was a fellow hater this time. This hater went by the name Shaquana Jefferson. She uploaded a now-deleted video about her unpopular opinions, and there she talked about how she didn't like Charlie Gold. I am writing this from what I can gather from other videos on the topic, but essentially Shaquana equated Charlie's success to her being a token black woman in the community, and even referred to Charlie Gold as being dark as which was quite a smooth brain move. This is why you watch back what you say, as that comment in itself upset many people. Shaquana would later say that what she meant was that Charlie Gold's skin did not match the foundation she was wearing, but the damage was done. A lot of haters reacted to it. Shaquana became the second casualty of Hater Nation, after How to Cameron. YouTube reactor Yaba, aka the YouTube Underground, did a video in response to this in defense of Charlie. My problem is, is that the fact that you, that you actually believe that we can't have a black woman on YouTube without them being a token black woman. That is the most disrespectful thing that I think I have heard yet. And then, due to the racist implications of her statement, friend of Charlie Gold, Life of a Free Spirit, proceeded to have, well, a meltdown of her own on Twitter, where she called Shaquana Jeffrey Dahmer, and then started lashing out at anyone who told her, hey, maybe comparing an unemployed chain-smoking lesbian to a well-known serial killer is too far. She even went on a now-deleted stream and said one of my favorite Life of a Free Spirit, aka Callie, quotes, Jeffrey Dahmer was a serial killer, but he wasn't a f***ing racist bitch. Eventually, Charlie Gold responded to Shaquana, a lot more eloquently than her friend Callie, in a video titled, What I Chose to Learn from Shaquana Jefferson. It was a good video, if I'm going to be honest. In the video, she addresses the statements that were no doubt hurtful to her at the time, but also empathized with Shaquana. And even though Shaquana Jefferson is, for the most part, in my opinion, seemingly like a negative person, she does have a qu quite a bit of support. So when I took the time to not be as biased and take the video personal, I rewatched the video. I put everything aside to see or try to understand what was the intent of the video? What, what was the reason behind this? And it really came down to the fact that Shaquana was just hurt. Her feelings were hurt. She was bitter because I came into this community. I came into this community a couple of months ago. And for whatever reason, everyone has a different reason. And sometimes I don't understand it. For whatever reason, a lot of people were supportive of me. A lot of people wanted to hear more about me, wanted to hear more of my opinion. And said she appreciated some of Shaquana's video. But I realized how ridiculous I've been for the past few weeks and how I've been questioning myself and how I've been doubting myself. So for that, at the very least, I appreciate when it comes to that video. There's nothing about that comment I appreciate. But even better, Charlie Gold made the statement that she couldn't for sure say that Shaquana was a racist. Is it racist to call me the token black woman and call my skin dark as I don't know. I can't for sure call this woman a racist, but did it have a lot of racial undertones? Absolutely. Charlie could not be stopped. Girl was on fire. Charlie did finally begin reacting to Foodie Beauty videos with a video titled Foodie Beauty Plus Size Slash Tent Size Haul Reaction, an obviously mean title mocking the other woman's large size. Let's note here that Charlie herself is around 300 pounds at this point. Her earlier videos were mostly focusing on Amberlynn Reed's health in her reactions, but now she was directly mocking the size and the size alone of the women she was watching. I know for sure my underwear is big, but that looks just like the black version of the tent that Tana and Jake rented for their wedding. That's huge. That is not positive. It was catty, but everyone was here for it. Foodie Beauty has a history of flagging people, reporting people to CPS, and being rude to others herself. There's nothing wrong with bullying a bully in many people's eyes. 
Then came in another person who very vocally disliked Charlie Gold, Nini Love Reacts, who made a video titled, Charlie Gold Stalking Foodie Beauty, LOL, Reaction, on October 20th, 2019. This is the first negativity I could find towards Charlie. Nini has a history of making videos on Amberlynn Reed herself, but for some reason decided to go after Charlie Gold. Perhaps it's because in this community, the targets are all fat women, and Charlie Gold is a fat woman herself. It also might be because as a fat person, Charlie Gold being so cruel specifically about appearances might have pissed off many people. That being said, Nini came into the anti-hater nation scene. Charlie, don't shake your head because you, you, you ain't like this. Like, you still a big girl. Nini also attacked Michael B. Petty in this video too, claiming that the haters go way too far in their commentary and then freak out when they get back. Charlie goes, the Michaels, the all the other people, when they sit up here and they go at these people, and it's funny how they'll go at these people, they'll try to, you know, go in their Facebook, go in their Instagram, they'll try to do all the research on like Chantel, Amberlynn and all this and all that, try to get in into their personal life. And then when they come back, when Chantel come back and f cuss they ass out, then they wanna act like, oh, Chantel is a bad person. Oh, Chantel is this. And then they wanna play victim. And don't think I'm supporting Nini here. She's freaking nuts. Everyone in this community is nuts. Charlie would continue to poke at Foodie Beauty in Amberlynn, and eventually on December 7th, 2019, she would challenge Amberlynn Reed to a weight loss challenge. Here's a clip from YouTuber Rose Analysis talking about it. I'll link her video below. So on December 7th, 2019, Charlie went on live to openly invite Amberlynn to take part in a weight loss challenge. So the rules were pretty simple. The competition would run from January 2nd, 2020 until May 2nd, 2020, and the goal would just be to lose the highest percent of body fat. So Charlie and Amber would have to post weigh-ins to their YouTube channels every month, and then the last weigh-in would have to be at a physician's office, and Charlie offered to pay for Amberlynn's visit as well. If now Amber were to lose the challenge, she would have to donate $2,000 to the charity of Charlie Gold's choice. Now if Charlie loses, she would have to donate $1,000 to the charity of Amberlynn's choice and she would stop making Amberlynn videos forever. The videos I've seen from her so far are great. So the problem here is that I believe at this point, Amberlynn Reed had been losing weight. Meanwhile, Charlie Gold hadn't really been keeping up with her weigh-ins. It had been about two full months at this point since Charlie Gold's last health update. Amberlynn Reed, of course, didn't accept the challenge. Charlie did promise to do the challenge by herself, even if Amberlynn Reed didn't respond. If she doesn't want to do it, do it anyways. Yeah, the thing is, I was planning to bring weigh-ins back in January anyways. So whether Amberlynn says no, I'm bringing my weigh-ins back. With this, the year ends. Here's the problem. Charlie Gold starts out 2020 pretty good. When I say she started the year off well, Charlie had some kind of Facebook weight loss group where she assigned people to a challenge each month to help other women be inspired. Also, she is supposed to be doing a weight loss challenge against herself since Amberlynn Reed didn't accept. It's a good start. The problem is, Charlie doesn't do what she says anywhere. She eventually abandons the Facebook weight loss group that she started. And not only that, during the time she's supposed to be challenging herself and bringing back weigh-ins, she doesn't. She uploaded a video titled, My Recent Self-Sabotage, on March 29th, 2020. In the video, she talks about issues in her life causing her to fail on her weight loss around the holidays, which in her words, instead of eating for comfort, I was so desperate to not turn to food. I was under the impression alcohol would be a better choice. She essentially alludes that she had developed and cured a dependency on alcohol in a very short time. I was on a slippery slope and self-sabotage was very much turning into self-destruction. However, I made it through. Maybe these claims from her were true, but the problem is she had not been holding herself accountable to her audience, much like the women she critiqued. Along with this failure, more people began to be critical of her, and somebody appeared on the scene to make a video reacting to Charlie Gold reacting to Amber Lynn by the name of The Sovereign. The Sovereign's main issue in these reactions were that she saw Charlie Gold as being too nitpicky. Oh, I need to, ooh. She's just looking, she's just nitpicking. She's just looking for stuff to be mad at. Clearly, you need to fix your face, okay? Having a permanent scowl will give you wrinkles. As well as being a bully. I don't, I don't find this funny. 
a snide comment, one shady comment, I can get behind me like, ah, ha ha ha, you shaded her. Like, it's funny, but this is this is straight bullying and it doesn't sit right with me, it doesn't sit right with my soul. I'm gonna like, now, forget my clothes, I'm gonna go find another video. Um, this, her channel seems like it's a justification for people to be assholes. And I don't cuss a lot on my channel, but yeah, assholes. You guys deserve the full assholes unbleeped out. Uh, wow. Two days after this, The Sovereign would produce a second video on Charlie Gold, titled, Charlie Gold, Becoming Infected by the Toxicity You Hate, where she talks about Charlie Gold becoming toxic over time. You sit there with the face of a disapproving stepmother and critique um, Amberlynn Reed's bra, her showering habits. Charlie Gold is borderline, like, this is obsessive. I don't care what Charlie Gold has to say about Amberlynn Reed. If you are consistently watching Amberlynn Reed's videos, no matter what she uploads, like, literally, Amberlynn Reed could upload a video reviewing a white t shirt, and Charlie Gold would make a reaction video about Amberlynn Reed reviewing a white t-shirt. Like she, you, Charlie Gold is the literal personification of the cereal challenge. Not only did the critique of Charlie grow, but Charlie Gold also got doxxed around this time. Like I said, Kiwi Farms is a major player in this, and in the Hater Nation fan-made thread, a user posted her information, including a mugshot from Charlie Gold being involved in legal issues. This was probably the first catalyst of the fission between haters and anti-haters. Charlie at first responded maturely to the doxing and admitted and owned up to what had happened. She wrote on Twitter, Just to clarify, the arrest is legit. It's not a rumor. I had a traffic violation and missed the court date because it was sent between me moving places. I turned myself in and I'm good to go. That wasn't her only legal issue though. She also added information about her owing a lot in back rent and how she was not doing well financially before YouTube. One problem detractors had though was the weight on the mugshot was listed at 310 pounds. But anyone watching her knew she had weight issues, so that was not a problem for a lot of people. And a lot of people came to her defense. I really didn't think much of it early on, and thought her owning up to it was pretty okay. And she even started selling merch with her mugshot on it, which was funny enough to me. Great, end of story, right? Wrong. After the doxing, Charlie Gold probably uploaded one of the most critical videos on Chantel, where in the title she calls Chantel Pig Mad instead of Big Mad. Because tee hee, get it? Chantel is fat, just like Charlie is. Unfortunately for the forums out there, this is the only time I fell on my face this year. There she begins getting real mean. She doesn't even realize what she's saying because she's that dumb. The cheese curds have traveled from her vagina into her brain and she can't think. She's honestly just a Michelin man and refrigerator crossbreed that just won't listen. She's a bitter, bitter pig because she's stubborn. She's a stubborn Canadian pig. She insulted Foodie Beauty and called her a thick cut Canadian bacon. Our amazing Canadian bacon, thick cut Canadian bacon Chantel has released. But then she also refers to Shaquana, who she addressed very eloquently months prior as a donkey. And their donkey, Shaquanda Jefferson's. Charlie loves to compare other women to animals. Just pointing that out now. People who already disliked Charlie for whatever reason began posting videos of her mugshots and calling her out for what they thought as having similar flaws to the women she made a career on critiquing. I even saw a decent commentary video on reaction channels by a small YouTuber going over why she no longer liked Charlie Gold, named Caitlin Page. And so Charlie can sit on her channel and talk all the shit she wants, morning, noon, and night, and people praise her, but if somebody wants to have a different opinion or stand up for themselves, they get bashed for it. I understand people just hate on Chantel and these reaction channels can do no wrong, but I find that kind of disgusting. I, I, I honestly do. And I don't know why. Um, and I don't have anything against reaction channels. I just don't understand why they, they really, uh, they really think they're the A few days after the pig mad video, Charlie Gold received her own Kiwi Farms thread. The opening of the thread goes over the basic Charlie Gold info, but continues in a separate section with information that reads, 
At first, Charlie Gold's YouTube channel didn't get much attention, not even when she made a video ranting about the one time Amber Lynn Reid wrote on Tumblr nearly 10 years ago. This video is seemingly lost to time. If you have an archive, speak up. Charlie's initial boost in viewership came in when popular fitness YouTubers started giving Charlie shine. They seemed to appreciate seeing an obese person on the platform who shunned the fat acceptance movement and was dedicated to improving herself. Despite this exposure, what really caused Charlie's channel to explode in popularity was, of course, Amberlynn Reed. In the spring of 2019, Amberlynn was in the midst of a self-imposed challenge with the goal of uploading a YouTube video each day, a hundred days in a row. Since the video went up at the same time each day. Various YouTubers would livestream their reactions to Amber Lynn's video and get some of that super chat coin. There was one day when Amber Lynn Reed's upload was late by several hours, and in that time, thousands of whale watchers had found their way to Charlie's stream. While the stream itself was unremarkable, most of those viewers became devoted fans. Like most reaction channels, Charlie's insights devolved over time into petty nitpicking because there are only so many different ways you can say, LOL, fat, before it gets repetitive. It's something to be expected in this niche genre of videos, and fans typically aren't bothered. However, Charlie's fans, and certainly her detractors, began to notice that despite her boasting and bloviating, she was failing to lose any weight. The OP also pointed out Amberlynn Reed's weight loss success in the ending of the year of 2019, while Charlie Gold failed on it. The Kiwi Farmers congratulated Charlie on her new thread. We aren't only focusing on Charlie here, even though I think of her as the catalyst of the drama. Around this time, screenshots of smaller YouTuber, Biggest Mikey, antagonizing foodie beauty in DMs began to circulate. In the DMs, the two insult each other back and forth. Though from the screenshots, it seems that Biggest Mikey started the DM fight, and it ended in him mocking foodie beauty for having to undergo major surgery, resulting in her losing her ability to have children. It was also around this time, at least according to Kiwi Farms, that Charlie began deleting negative comments. Charlie kept it pushing though, still dedicating her social media to insulting the designated fat girl villains of YouTube. Meanwhile, on the anti-hater side, between the end of February and the beginning of March, Nini would continue to make videos on Charlie Gold. These videos are very, um, mean. You fat You greasy neck ass Best way I can describe it. Like, Charlie Gold is cruel to Foodie Beauty, and Nini Love Reacts dials that cruelty up to 11 and directs it at Charlie. March 4th comes around and Charlie began the narrative that Chantel was racist because Chantel herself had shouted out some anti-Charlie channels that were not PC. I believe one of them was called Fatty Gold and had a picture of a gorilla. Now, this whole debacle with the Fatty Gold channel, it has been consistently stated how offensive the channel has been. It has been consistently stated how racist, homophobic, derogatory. And I find it so hilarious how you allowed a troll account, not even a legitimate creator, to send you off, to send you off to such a spiral to where you would stoop lower than anyone to just so you could feel that someone had your back. I could never. The Fatty Gold Channel and other channels would say that the Fatty Gold Channel had the gorilla theme before making posts about Charlie Gold. And they used to make videos on Amberlynn Reed. They also claimed to just be a fan of Harambe. Pretty much is just Chantel once again explaining that how could she have done something that was problematic when she had no idea that thing was problematic and completely disregarding the fact that she went on to continue that behavior after being educated on how that is problematic. Also, Fatty Gold showed up in the chat and left this message which says, I had the girl icon before I made videos and another name. I changed it to Fatty Gold. I kept the gorilla because I love Harambe. And besides, she calls you a pig, even if I didn't have that pic. I got that screenshot from Valgal on Twitter and also the fact that I just don't believe that. In all honesty, they were a really small shit posting channel and they really caused a lot of chaos, like a Streisand effect. Charlie wrote on the 4th of March on Twitter, I won't post certain things publicly, but just to be very clear, if anyone is wondering why Chantel continues to interact with a channel that has shown they're racially charged and homophobic, it's because she knows them. Not a question, it's a fact. The Sovereign appeared once more on the 6th of March to make a video targeting the hater Michael B. Petty. In the video, she asked herself if she thinks Michael is as much of a bully as Charlie is in her opinion. She states that she also thinks the commentary from Michael B. Petty is ridiculously nitpicky. 
this is just very, this is all just nitpicky behavior. It's definitely not something to lose your mind over. He's just nitpicking, Amberlynn Reed, so um, yeah, okay. And bizarre how people find this content entertaining. He's calling out Amberlynn Reed on people that every, on things that everyday people do, which is just like, I don't understand how people find this entertaining. One, because this reaction is, it's not entertaining, but the things that he's saying is just like saying, well, why is the sky blue? Why can't the sky be green or purple? Or I don't even understand why the wind has to blow. Can't the earth turn in the right direction and not the left direction? What, this is just dumb. Why, like, he's just critiquing dumb things. He's just nitpicking things for no reason. And it seems like he's just trying to squeeze out as much of a reaction as he possibly can where there is none. She does conclude that she does not think he is a bully, but instead thinks of him as a troll. I will say that Michael B. Petty is a professional troll. He is trolling Amber Lynn Reed professionally. Nini also continued her Charlie Gold videos, posting a video on this day as well, though the Sovereign was able to make her points better than Nini was. You fat blubber, you won't be able to pay your bills because nobody will watch you as she did not go for low blows because of the growing critique of charlie gold from around the internet a shit posting anti-hater nation channel began making compilations of all the youtubers critiquing charlie gold in a video titled black youtubers versus charlie gold she can't call them racist they say watching these fat people eat on youtube is like watching a slow death like watching a heroin addict shoot up no see Watching y'all reaction channels is like watching a video of other kids kicking other kids on a playground, throwing rocks at them and calling them names. If that is unacceptable, then y'all reaction channels should be unacceptable as well. We shouldn't allow that as well. That's, that, that's the equivalent of what y'all are doing. That's bullying. On the same day as the She Can't Call Them Racist video, aka March 7th, 2020, small hater YouTuber Biggest Nike and Cherry Berry both tweeted out, if you subscribe to Chantel, I will assume you're a racist or a feeder. I have yet to be proven wrong in any interaction she's had with her subs. To which Biggest Mikey writes, I had a boyfriend from Senegal. Yeah, slave masters used to r their property often, so yeah. Also, you can certainly have low opinions of black people, yet still love the taste of brown sugar. Sadly, living in the South, I found that out the hard way. Around this time, Charlie Gold also posted a community post accusing Chantel again of racism and homophobia because she chose to support a small channel that defended her. Charlie writes, Hello guys, let's add some context to Foodie Beauty's most recent community post that has now been deleted, of course, where she was attempting to gaslight her audience. Some of you may remember Foodie Beauty's upload on February 22nd of 2020, where she said, I think it's a low blow to call someone a fatty. I don't agree with that. I don't support that channel. Due to the fact that's the channel she's referencing, Fatty Gold made a video spreading my docs, using a racially charged image to represent me, and has also spread homophobic videos as well. I don't visit that channel. I woke up to DMs this morning to let me know about a new intro and watermark they have, and also Foodie Beauty herself commented on the video, but it was hidden under a supporter of mine's comment, thinking no one would see I'm assuming, and has actually been very supportive of this channel since the February 22nd video she uploaded, explaining she didn't know the reference of a gorilla and people of color. So she is now educated on this since then, and she is choosing to remaining supportive of a channel who does something similar to me, but with a doxing racist and homophobic twist? Wouldn't that be what we call a hypocrite? I now call her a racist and a hypocrite. Foodie Beauty slash Chantel Marie is a racist in my eyes now. The image of the gorilla is at the start of the video, and the watermark of the gorilla remains in the lower right side of the video that YouTube has now taken down because it violated their policy, but I got video footage prior to it being taken down throughout the duration. So why would Chantel still support this channel? Does she not think this is disrespectful to her POC supporters or LGBTQ+. She commented on a video on the Fatty Gold channel saying 99% of gay men have HIV. Supporters? Of course that doesn't matter. Her hate for me is more important than stepping away from such a channel. Video coming soon. Below are a few screenshots out of many that Foodie Beauty commented on the Fatty Gold channel, with timestamps dating after the 22nd and as recent as today. She's displaying the same attitude and behavior she has an issue with. Could it be? Chantel is a hypocrite, liar, and a racist in my opinion with her recent actions? Finally, the alleged racism of Foodie Beauty was addressed on March 8th by Charlie Gold with a video titled, Chantel, Learn From This.
In the video, she calls Chantel a racist for supporting the Fatty Gold channel. What I was saying is with the community post, I think people were a bit confused thinking that I'm saying Chantel's comments specifically were racist. I was actually referring to her actions. Fatty Gold is a known racist uh, channel at this point. They're racist, they're homophobic, and just all these problematic things. The reason I stand in the stance saying that Chantel is racist is because she continued to support this channel. She also admitted to reporting the Fatty Gold channel, which was taken down for the doxing of her and for implying gay YouTuber Zachary Michael might have AIDS. But it actually turns out that YouTube took the channel down. So the only video that I've personally, well, two videos that I've personally reported was the one about my docs and the one referring to Zach. But the gist of this live stream is that Chantal is 100% racist. This will stay with you for a long time, Chantel. A long time. And she keeps saying, I'm not racist. You guys know I'm not racist. And she always looks to the side. I want to make something very clear. If you think you getting down by an African for a few months or a few years, let me phrase that, means you're not, uh, you're not racist, you're dumb as fuck. That means nothing. Let's be clear. If you thinking you getting down by an African means you're not racist, you're just stupid and you need to stop speaking. Chantel responded to the racist accusations around March 9th, saying she is not racist and that she was pushed to her limit by a community that spends their free time insulting her. She also said she didn't think of the gorilla as racist. Charlie Gold screenshotted the racist allegations response and wrote this on Twitter. One, I never called her white anything. I've called a Canadian insert whatever I call her at that time. Two, never shamed her for not being able to have kids. Three, that worthless apology should be to your audience in a video. Or is the only thing worth recording and, continued in part two, and posting are your binges. Four, still avoiding how you can explain supporting a homophobic video, I see. Michael B. Petty and Life of a Free Spirit would also respond to Chantel's I'm not a racist rant on Twitter by writing, I was wrong. That everyone was a little racist comment was from the troll account. I still think her rant was ridiculous. Anyone that can compare fat shaming to racism is an idiot. I have not once heard anyone call her a white pig. She is bold faced lying. Life of a Free Spirit writes, There's been a serious target on Charlie, myself, Michael, and Biggest Mikey, and I wonder what the f we all have in common. Meanwhile, people are trying to gaslight and say it's all of us. No the f it's not, and that's just facts. It just gets worse for us when we finally speak up. The hypocrisy is deep, and I don't give a f to call it out, but somehow when we're being comedic, there's no issue. Miss me with the f I will continue to call this out as I see fit. Hashtag period. At Aphrodite's Peach made the same video on the same topic, and Charlie and I were the main targets in Chantel's last rage post. However, people would rather listen to Aphrodite because they prefer her delivery, right? Because how dare black women be upset about racism? And a hater I haven't mentioned before named Danny Suze also joined into the f Chantel train on this day. And note, this is March 9th, 2020. She wrote, you guys remember when Chantel accused Zachary Michael of being ableist and asked him how he would feel if someone was making homophobic videos. Hmm. Now, remember how Chantel is racist for supporting a channel with a gorilla profile pic? Well, people began to dig into the haters. Because of course, and someone dug up Callie, Charlie Gold's friend, supporting someone named Louis Farrakhan, who is homophobic and anti-Semitic. I'm saying it to you guys, but there are Louis Farrakhan? Louis Farrakhan is probably one of the biggest racists out there. Yeah, he's famous. You really gonna talk about Farrakhan, who was an activist? This is why I hate guilt by association and the idea of not letting people learn anything. Louis Farrakhan has infinitely more power in the world than posting channel Fatty Gold. The Fatty Gold channel at this point is 100% gone, flagged for wrong speak and doxing. Not only that, but Nini Love also got a video flagged off the internet. And I believe she also said something one could perceive as homophobic about gay men and AIDS. Again, not supporting anyone here. Nini talked about being flagged by the haters. Somebody punk fat ass, probably fat ass Charlie Gold, trying to flag our channel. Trying to flag our channel, y'all. We the people. And Charlie Gold and Michael B. Petty responded to her on Twitter. Michael B. Petty tweeted, I have been asked why I won't respond to this Nene Love woman, and this is why. She is trash and will probably always be trash. This will be the only energy I ever give this trifling ignorant person. P.S. Nice dog food. 
Charlie Gold retweeted his tweet with the comment, I've been asked the same. She's a toothless trash bin and homophobic. A minute and a half I'll never get back. Shaking my head. This is the lady who originally made the video Chantel supported, by the way. She has some great creator friends. Rolling eye emoji, face palm emoji. Not only was Charlie Gold flagging the critique against her, but the Facebook communities were also flagging the videos. The next major turn of events happened on March 11th, 2020, when the tiny YouTuber John's Peanut Gallery posted a video on her unpopular opinions, titled similarly to the video by Shaquana that triggered the nation less than a year before. In the video, she calls out Charlie Gold. As far as Chantel is concerned, I understand why she feels the way that she does about Charlie Gold. Now, I have to, I have to say first, of course, more f***ing disclaimers. Everything having to do with race is disgusting, is completely something that I don't agree with. I think as far as, as far as Charlie Gold is concerned, she is absolutely hypocritical when it comes to the weight loss aspect of it. Before I even get into that, I have to say it really rubs me the wrong way. Aside from the hypocrisy aspect of Charlie Gold and the fact that she critiques other women who have a similar addiction that she has, she has admitted that she struggles with binge eating and eating issues also. And what makes me judge Charlie, Charlie Gold aside from the hypocritical aspect of it is the fact that I would assume that someone like her would be the most understanding to women who have similar issues as she does. So that alone makes me judge her as a person first and foremost. And then what makes me judge her is, do you know how many people have come into my DMs and said, oh my God, you really, you, you must be a fan of Charlie Gold, hey? Because you guys say almost the same things in your video. Do you know how much that pisses me off when I uploaded before Charlie did? And criticizes the censorship of Fatty Gold. And another thing, as far as the Fatty Gold channel, I don't agree with anything they posted. Definitely racist tones, definitely disgusting things. The shit they they posted, reposted about HIV, disgusting. I will never, ever support a channel like that. The doxing, forget it. The doxing, that was it. After the doxing, everything they say out of their mouth or on their channel to me, fucking it's insignificant because of that. Once you show me that that's the kind of person you are, everything out of your mouth after that is fucking sullied. So, um, where was I going with that? Oh, the way people were celebrating the Fatty Gold channel being terminated by YouTube, I, I will never be celebrating something like that. While that channel was disgusting and deplorable, I am categorically against censorship. The comments were surprisingly filled with people agreeing with her perspective. This starts Hatergeddon part three. The first one being Shaquana Jefferson, the second one being Charlie getting doxxed, and now this. Charlie immediately addresses the video via Twitter, calling Peanut Shaquana 2.0. She also made a thread on Peanut's opinion video, writing, Thread, at Peanut Gallery 33. 1. Are you insinuating I watch your videos before my own and copy you? 2. Anytime I'm late to reacting to a video and watch it, I say in the beginning it's not my first time seeing it, or I may have seen clips of it online, but I have some thoughts. 3. You're mad I don't comment on your videos? You know how many people I'm subscribed to and don't watch their videos? F*** outta here. 4. I don't like your tweets? You know how many tweets I miss? 5. The only reason I'm saying something is you're not going to make it seem as. 6. I try my best to shout out as many channels as I can because that's how my channel grew in the first place. My description box in every reaction is dedicated to spreading other channels. 7. I'm not the face of anything. Charlie Gold would continue to insult people on Twitter after this to which a portion of her audience were not supportive. Charlie would also tweet out that day some kind of admission thread about her truth or whatever. 
Not only did Charlie weigh in on Peanut's opinion video, but the eldest member of Hater Nation also chimed in, DC Media Girl. She posted a lengthy essay to her followers about her opinion. I haven't mentioned DC Media Girl before. She didn't insult Peanut Gallery over her opinion, and mostly agreed that Peanut can have her own opinion. Nice. Then, after this, Biggest Mikey came in to try to play peacemaker between all the content creators, where Charlie responds to Biggest Mikey by saying that nobody watches Peanut Gallery anyways. My favorite thing is that earlier on, Amberlynn Reed responded to Charlie Gold making videos on her and was a lot more mature than Charlie was. Here's a clip. Um, first of all, I was like, oh, this Charlie girl does not like me, but she's gorgeous, so hi. So I watched a few more of her videos and I mean, it is what it is, you know, like people have their opinions and I don't know. Because of the drama between Peanut and Charlie, the two would go on a now private stream on Irate Alex's channel. I believe this is on the 12th of March. No copies exist of this live stream, but Peanut and Charlie confronted each other apparently. Peanut would go on her own live stream to talk about the situation. Not only that, but Alex would later upload a video explaining why he removed the live stream, saying it made everyone look bad. Sadly, the saga of fat girl commentary internet blood sports is gone, but it won't be the end of the insanity from this community. I'm so bummed out it's gone though. After this event, Callie went on her own live stream and started to melt down at Peanut for not liking Charlie. But let a know next time. At me next time. You gonna unfollow me and then you gonna go after Charlie. What type of is that? I don't respect that. Uh, this stream also resulted in a famous line from Callie. While motherfuckers over here arguing with each other on streams, while motherfuckers over here at my on Twitter, certain threads being messy. I rate Alex got his stream down in time to avoid posting channels, Citrine Dream, and Kate Winslet for making fun of him or his guests. But for days after, Callie's stream clips got to be the centerpiece for the anti-haters to laugh at. The tables were now turning against the haters. Oh, at first they were the ones to laugh at the fat girls with the audience. Now the audience laughs at them. It might be kind of a Streisand effect in its own way. They flagged Fatty Gold down, and now more people come out to shit on them, this time with no avatar with racist connotations. Despite the audience beginning to turn on the haters, they were still there for each other. And a few days after the Peanut Meltdown stream, on March 15th, Alexis Shook, another hater channel, tweeted out support for Charlie Gold. The same day as this tweet, Irate Alex put up two videos in regard to his part in the drama and why he removed the streams, as mentioned earlier. I don't blame him for not wanting people he associates with to look bad, but fam, fat girl commentary channel Bloodsport sounds dope as heck. Quarantine started to become more a thing around this time. On the 18th of March, Charlie Gold posted to her community tab and says that because of the tough conditions the world is in, it is difficult to sit down and film. The next mess up in Hater Nation happened the day after Charlie's community post, when a clip from One Vlog Away, a small YouTube reaction channel, began to circulate. Did the breakup have something to do with her weight? Because she's, she's like compartmentalizing all of this. like. Oh, you know, I need to eat better because I'm going through a breakup and blah, blah, blah. Well, did the breakup have something to do with the eating? Because that's what you're hinting at. Can you pause for a second? No, I'm busy. I've been trying to- Every thing I say, you counter dick and talk oh, yeah, it was I about hit the, the floor bag. and I had to hold my- <sighs> Sorry, guys. Mom got me chicken. So she was asking a piece of chicken I want, but I've been doing- This is the third time doing this video. I know somebody's going to get mad because I yelled at Nick or I got <laughs> irritated with Nick. Literally third time trying to do this video. Like. I'd also like to add that about two months after this, another clip from one vlog away began to circulate of her that was worse. Comment after comment that I hear every single video, just let me live my life, okay? How no, about this? No How about you fucking eat your shit when you're not on camera then, you stupid bitch. How about that? How does that sound? Instead of having a problem with everything somebody else says, how about you just don't eat on camera? And you can go hide in your closet and eat your food all to yourself. Go kill yourself on your own. I'll let you live your f***ing life when you actually decide that you give a shit about your life. Then I'll let you live it. How's that sound? How's that sound? She is a very small channel and would eventually quit doing reactions. In context, the clip is her getting, by her own admission, too heated and telling Foodie Beauty to eat unhealthy off camera rather than on. This clip, when it began to circulate in May, had a mixed reaction from those in Hater Nation. Then, on the 20th, Kiwi Farms awarded Charlie's thread 
with findings that back in October of the previous year, Charlie had been in a car accident. It was shown that Charlie had been driving with both an expired license and an expired insurance. This was information that was a bit creepy to dig into, but let me point out, if it had been Chantel that someone had dug into like this, there would be five plus videos about how selfish and irresponsible and literally disgusting Chantel is for driving without the proper documentations. And people in Hater Nation pry into information that their targets are not actively showing on their public social media, like children's photos, Facebook statuses from years before they joined YouTube. After this, on the 21st of March, it was announced that the Hater Girls will be doing a stream together called the distraction stream for those stuck at home during the quarantine. The people who were announced to be in attendance of the stream were Jana Roller Fitness, Danny Sues, Cherry Berry Weight Loss, Roses Ranting, Kicking Geese, Manal Zane, and other creators who may jump on throughout the stream. And the next day, the stream went on. The stream ended up being a six hour conversation of varying success depending on the time one tunes in. Sometimes it was nice background noise and other times it appeared as though Charla Gold was dominating the stream. The anti-hater channels immediately began to criticize the stream, nitpicking moments when Charlie dominated the conversation. Nitpicking much like the haters nitpick the obese girl channels. I didn't know they made such a thing. I also love Nirvana. <laughs> I just said, do you though? Because I've never heard you talk about it. I've never seen you like, you know, wear any like merch or like anything. Do anything to, that would kind of like indicate to us that you are, you also love them. On the same day of the stream, the Sovereign posted a part two of her reaction to Charlie Gold. In the video, there was more criticism of Charlie Gold focusing so heavily on Amber Lynn and nitpicking her so much. He showed her text messages of what she eat. If Amberlynn Reed is known for lying, then why are you guys so surprised when she lies? Why are you why are you surprised? Do you guys not learn your lesson? Y'all still get offended when she lies? Get that's that's a you problem. The reception, like the Sovereign's other videos, was well received as the number of people tired of the haters continued to grow. All right, so at this time, Charlie continued to make videos criticizing other women for their health choices until the month of March closed out with a video I discussed earlier, the self-sabotage video about how she ruined her eating in December by drinking too much. We're on to April. Views were doing worse. Charlie uploaded more responses, but something weird happened on the 3rd of April. This was a reaction video where Charlie used a weird cartoon of herself instead of going on camera. The video was not only visually off, but what was said in the video was honestly the most cruel of any of the videos previously. No, Chantel, what you're smelling is yourself. And probably the cheese curds that are still stuck in the little crevices that you don't clean. Yes, that's nasty. Why would you want to become a human fridge-sized dog. Chantel Marie, big buttery meat. She is a bottomless dirty pit. I'd like to remind everyone this is a 36 year old woman. I know she looks about 20 years her senior but she's 36 years old. The self-entitled obese hyena that she is. Something must have been going on behind the scenes or maybe the criticism had gotten to Charlie Gold but this video was for me kind of the big changeover from her original personality. I might be reading too much into it, but whatever, it was a mean video. People did not like this weird style of video either. Charlie responded to the criticism with a community tab post immediately after Charlie's cruel video to Chantel. Charlie Gold came into Chantel's live stream. Just remember, Charlie did this after shitting on Chantel in a video the previous day. After causing Foodie Beauty to end her stream early, allegedly, in fear of Charlie Gold, Charlie then mocked the YouTuber on her Twitter for ending the stream because of her. To write, Chantel Marie signed off just because I commented, wow, all I said was losing weight will help her not being able to breathe. It helped me. What did I do wrong? She was already on the subject crying laughing emoji shrug emoji. If she truly did see my comment and ended it because of that, her facial expression and timing was too perfect. Sorry to my YouTube friends for costing us some valuable future content. I didn't think about that before sending. Mwah. After mocking Chantel, she posted again to Twitter about Chantel getting an alert on her phone. Like who tweets out that the area the woman they are bothering has an alert in order to attack their eating issues. Chantel's little drama quickly passed in like a day and the next fat girl became a target. 
Life by Jen. It turned out she flagged down a Hater Nation style channel that talked about Jen instead of Amber Lynn. Her channel was called Who Is She? Charlie stepped in on this day to rightly defend the channel that was taken down. Charlie then proceeded to make a Life by Jen video about the drama in their community. She used the animated drawing again and received less views than normal. Now here is where more haters come into our little story. YouTuber Who Is She, the one who lost her channel because of Jen, comes back on a new channel. And then on a stream, she accidentally turned her webcam on. And she had previously described herself as skinny in other videos. But the image that appeared on the webcam was not a skinny woman. One YouTuber who did not like Who Is She by the name of Cupcake Vegan posted the image from the live stream to laugh at her. Fair game, right? Someone who criticizes other women for what they do online shows something publicly online. It should be fair to criticize her for the fact that she lied about being a skinny queen. Wrong. People started accusing Cupcake Vegan of doxing. This results in Cupcake Vegan, uh, going to the hospital from being stressed for being attacked. The two resolved this in private. I still don't know why this is some kind of morality issue, but it was in the community. Then, on the 15th, Chikara, Irate Alex, and Peanut Gallery stream discussing the ethics of posting a screen cap of a live stream on Twitter. They argue it back and forth whether or not posting a screen cap of a live stream is doxing or not. They all had their own points of views on the deep subject matter. No, I think I think the main the main issue that we are disagreeing on here is that Alex just considers it a dox, no matter whose fault it is, because Wrong. Peanut. I consider it a spreading that. of doxing. You what? What's There's the difference? a difference between doxing and the spreading of doxing. Okay. Uh, or spreading of doxes. I just, I don't understand why you consider just a facial shot doxing. Maybe it's up. Maybe we can say. No, oh, I, no, I, I, I agree. No, I agree that. I agree that sharing somebody's picture, if they want to remain anonymous, would be considered a dox. However, what I disagree is that she, by her own fault, doxed herself. That's where I'm not, that's where my position stands. Like, I agree with what Alex is saying. However, if you want to remain anonymous and that's so precious to you, then you need to make sure your setup is better than putting a sticker on your phone and it falling off. That's just my opinion. She, she f***ed herself over. Peanut did try to use this to compare the situation to her being dogpiled for her unpopular opinion video. But do you not see a problem with the fact that I made a video where I absolutely was not trying to convince anybody of anything, just sharing a very unpopular opinion about a fellow reactor and that I was dogpiled or tried to, let me say, uh, for an opinion for an opinion that wasn't even cruel, where I was sharing just the way I felt and why I felt it. Now, if you don't think that that was absolutely hypocritical, when said creator does what they do, like how thin can your skin get and why did so many rally around them? I was not being cruel. I was not even trying to convince everybody of anything. And I'm not saying this, to really even go back into that situation, but it's just representative of exactly what Alona is saying. Why is it that most of the, these creators can dish it out, but they can't fucking handle it? This comment from the stream sums it up for how I feel about the ethics debate of sharing a live stream image. Someone writes, biggest non-issue ever debated. The quarantine is really getting to people's heads. YouTube Underground, aka Yaba, and Callie also did videos commenting on the drama. Callie just wished the best for Cupcake Vegan and admitted to not knowing the whole drama. I'm sitting here, all I know is the girl went to the damn hospital because she was having anxiety and shit. And I know how that feels being a person who started my channel out of darkness that I was experiencing in my own life. So I made this stream simply to tell her that she's not alone and how she's feeling. While Yaba discussed how sharing an image on a live stream is fair game when you yourself critique others. If her camera came on, it's fair game. So what if she did? So, so what? Her camera came on and nobody's supposed to take that screenshot and be like, aha! No, that ain't how, that ain't how it works. You're a shit talker. You're a shit talker like me. You're a shit talker like everybody else out here talking shit on, on, the people we do our reaction videos on. That ain't fair, that ain't a dox. Another person commenting against haters showed up once more, Caitlyn. She's a small channel, but I really liked her commentary on the whole hater nation drama going on at this time. But people like to tweet whenever they get a hate comment, they tweet it out like, mm, okay. Like you don't go to other people's videos and leave all the hate comments and make actual hate videos. But you think it's funny and want to retweet like, 
I forget what what reaction channel it was. I truly do, but they had retweeted um, a comment that they got that was like, "Oh, you fat," and they're like, "Ha ha, dude, you sit online and call people fat." Like, why are you taking one person's tweet and acting like, can you believe, can you believe they came from me? A reaction channel, they called me a fat bitch. That you can't step on me. Like, I make fun of you, you fucking peasant. Like, get over yourself. Same day as Caitlyn posting this video, on April 17th, the Facebook group used by many a woman to discuss Hater Nation and Fat Girl YouTube stuff began to also start to criticize Charlie Gold. Some people were there for her, and some people believed her to be a bully. But the discussion of Charlie Gold began to overtake the discussion of the usual law cows of the Facebook. Due to the drama becoming fairly juicy, on 420, a Kiwi Farms thread was created to discuss the Hater Nation as a law cow entity themselves. The opening would sum them up and how they are connected in order to guide the farmers who use the thread to navigate it and know who to discuss. And discussion did happen. I think the who is she doxing debate really got Hater Nation their own thread, cause not only did the haters absolutely go ballistic over this, but who is she emailed Joshua Connor Moon, the owner of Kiwi Farms. Foodie beauty stream, you obviously want your privacy can you see that an orthodox woman finds it supremely important? I find you interesting. I am sure you find the fact that an ultra-orthodox woman has found Hader Nation. If could affect my children in yeshivish. The primary reason I chose not to show my face. Not because I need to lose some weight. My kids are all in yeshivas that request no screens. I have a screen and decided to use my phone to call out Jen. I know her channels better than anyone else. I've gone through them with a fine tooth comb. You want to be allies perhaps? I can spare you the bore and direct you to which videos expose her by her own words for the fraud she is. My recent video I reacted to her blaming the government disability check she gets every month for her being lazy and complacent because she knows every month the money will be there and no government official is checking in on her. She's not even disabled. She can walk. She's just morbidly obese and lazy and daze herself. Anyway, I'd like to understand why you started Kiwi Farms. You don't want to be seen. Josh. Please, I'm asking as your fellow tribe member to please grant me a Pesach miracle and take it down. You want a different pick of me? You want me to send you a check? Be a best friend? How can I accommodate my fellow Jewish brother? <laughs> I'm funny. Please, Yehoshua, I can't sell you my firstborn child, but can we work out something? Thank you for your time in the matter, dearest Yehoshua. Josh. The drama passed and on the 21st of the month, Who Is She declared to her community that the drama was over. Also, did I mention that Who Is She supposedly emailed Life by Jen with her full docs and that the emails were apparently threatening? Yeah, she's nuts too. The biggest blow to Hater Nation came on the 23rd of the month with a new video by The Sovereign. This time, instead of being directed at one hater, the video targeted the Hater Nation as a whole and it was titled, Hater Nation Must Be Stopped. This is the first video that is against the haters to receive any decent amount of views. In the video, the Sovereign announces that the hater videos have failed as they have failed to inform her as to why she should dislike Amber so much. The reaction channels have failed at their jobs, utterly and horrendously failed at your jobs. Why is it so difficult for new people coming into the Amberverse to actually learn legitimate information about this woman? Why is it so difficult to find the receipts? Why is it so difficult to understand the world? And it's because the reaction channels have totally lost their way. The reaction channels have failed. The reaction, like you, what, what is going on with you guys? Why are you, deep dive, let's get into this. She criticized Michael B. Petty and him criticizing Amber Lynn Reed over what the Siren believed to be a nitpick. Here's an example. I came across a video of somebody saying Amber Lynn Reed had like, she insulted Michael B. Petty and called him fat and stuff and she was talking, basically talking And I'm just like, oh my God, really? Cause I have, I've never heard Amber Lynn Reed talk like that. And they're just like, oh yeah, you need to find this and find that. And I'm, it was like a live stream and I hear a lot of stuff happens on live streams and I just don't care that much. I'm not subscribed to y'all. So I'm over here trying to research, look for videos. I finally find the video of Amber Lynn calling Michael B. Petty fat. 
Um, he's gaining weight. I mean, that's all I really know. Um. <laughs> but aren't we all? I was for a very long time, so I have no room to judge, but I'm finally losing, so I'm happy about that. And I just want to be the one right now to apologize. I said some things on there that I probably shouldn't have. Direct you did. You said a lot of things on there you shouldn't have, girl. Please to you, Michael, I have Oh. No okay, room to this talk at all. Um I slept on it and I was like, really? Cuz I know how it feels. People constantly talking about your weight and I shouldn't have done that. It was more like a bitter moment. It's like having so many reaction channels constantly react to me. I just I reacted in a negative way. So it's not an apology. This is what we would call a non-apology. I shouldn't have done that. There's no excuse for it, but I do want to apologize. Amberlynn Reed said one shady comment. It was a little shady. It, just one shady comment, but I can't even say it was even that shady because she then applied the comment to herself. She was clearly like making a type of jokey joke type of deal. Nothing that anybody should have been upset about or even had to apologize about, but you guys blew it so out of proportion that Amberlynn Reed then went onto her YouTube channel and had to stand up and do an apology to Michael B. Petty, which I'm just like, girl, why are you apologizing? You said one shady, like it was a joke that you applied to yourself and it was even, after everything Michael B. Petty has said about Amberlynn Reed, y'all are mad over one comment, one, and then she still gets on her channel to apologize and then Michael B. Petty himself hops on the back to drag her, to drag her while she's trying to apologize to him. The video also had the Sovereign saying that she believed Charlie Gold had changed and Hater Nation needed to show restraint. Since initially making my Charlie Gold videos, I have seen a tangible change in her channel, though lately it does kind of seem like she may be backsliding, but I'm holding off. The restraint that I had at that time is the restraint that some of the Hater Nation community needs to show. You guys have got to find a line somewhere. You guys have got to understand that there are certain things that should not be done. There are certain lines that should not be crossed. And there's a certain level of responsibility that must be shown when you are impacting someone's actual life. The video did fairly well in views, nothing too mind-blowing, but this caused a wave of responses from Hater Nation. The haters took to Twitter to respond. Michael B. Petty addressed the criticism of him writing. Also, Sovereign, the reason I called it a non-apology was because what she said about me was the lesser of all the evils during that live stream. It was a cop-out. I didn't need or want an apology because the she spewed about other people during that Instagram stream was far worse. It was easier for her to seem like the bigger person by owning up to that small segment of that hour-long stream and not address any of the other stuff she said. But go off, sis. You are the knower of all the things. On Program Situation also chimed in by writing, You know, I only had an issue with one of her videos where she would complain about Charlie doing something and then do the same thing and it confused the heck out of me. I watched some of her other stuff and she seemed like a pretty rad person. I mean, she has her own crown. I guess what I'm getting at is that even though she comes for reactors, it's hard for me to not like her because one, that crown, two, she's great behind the camera, and three, it's okay if she disagrees or sees things differently, although I don't agree with a few of her takes I've seen. DC Media Girl also joined in to voice her opinion on the Sovereign's video, writing, What cracks me up is she blames us for the like-dislike ratios on Amberlynn Reed's videos, as well as negative comments. I think those may have something to do with the content Amberlynn Reed herself uploads. But what do I know? Charlie also responded. She said this on Twitter. I watched 18 minutes and tapped out. Crying laughing emoji. Reaction YouTuber Young Dumb Honeybun also responded when asked about the video informing readers that she had not seen it, as she is too amazing and busy to see it. I have barely touched on Young Dumb Honeybun. There's so many people involved in the story, but she does reaction videos about Amberlynn Reed, where she emphasizes how great she is by comparison to all the fat girls. Baby girl, I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. I have a whole beautiful man by my side. I have a family that loves me. We all take care of each other. We love each other. My skin is clear. My makeup is flawless. I am living my best life. Okay. And let's be fair here. They are allowed to dislike this video. They can take criticism or disagree. It's valid. I'm just here to give you the deets of what happened. Despite all this, the reception of the Sovereign's video was positive. DC Media Girl would go on stream to respond to the Sovereign. Her stream is her opinion on the video. But the Sovereign would use this response later in her own response to the haters' response to her. Yeah, I'm confused too. DC Media Girl also tries to tell the Sovereign to go after Kiwi Farms next. This is foreshadowing. 
Go after Kiwi Farms for bullying. Take on Reddit. Lolcow. Go after Lolcow. Commentary channel Irate Alex also did a stream in response to the Sovereign. Obviously, the video was, you know, hey, donation must be stopped, right? And, uh, you know, it's whatever. People can make videos. They can criticize. I don't I don't really care. But, of course, don't get f***ing triggered when people respond. Charlie Gold addressed the Sovereign once more in another Twitter thread on the 25th of April. In her response to the Sovereign's video, she pretty much says, if she responds, it's a problem. If she doesn't respond, it's a problem. And she's in a lose-lose situation. She also went so far as to compare Shaquana to an animal again. Oh, and also because Shaquana commented positively on the Sovereign, that means all the Sovereign's points are now invalid. Charlie also proceeded to tweet that the farms will eventually turn on the Sovereign. While this was going on, bodybuilding reaction channel Chikara Transformations decided to start throwing shade subtly at the beginning of her videos to other reaction channels. Well, yesterday I learned something rather amazing. I've heard about not eating carbohydrates after 8 o'clock, but I learned that when the sun goes under, apparently you get fat. You gain a double chin. I've never known this. And apparently, hold on, depending on how you sit, you suddenly get fat as well. So let's try this out, shall we? So apparently, let me tilt you down because it's relevant. All right, so let me tilt you down. Apparently, so if I'm sitting hunched over at night, I suddenly become obese. I wonder how that works. Hold on, hold on. Let me just go back so you can see my body, or most of it anyway. So let me lean forward. All right, I'm hunched over. Where's my double chin? Oh, hold on. Maybe on my belly. Oh, hold on. I'm sitting. And where's the fat? The next big, I guess, hypocrisy was that the reaction channel Young Dumb Honey Bun posted a quote around this time with the usage of the N-word. I don't know all the details, but anti-haters began latching onto this, as Charlie Gold had once had a now-missing rant on her channel berating Amberlynn Reed for using the N-word on her blog, like 10 years ago, and how that's bad. But the haters did not keep that same energy for Young Dumb, who then went to post an explanation for why it was okay for her to use the N-word, as she was reposting some kind of meme a person of color made. YouTuber Citrine Dream posted a text video response to this drama and pointed out at one point, and I quote, I really doubt it has never left your mouth, but I don't care. I'm not an SJW. I don't gang up on people for making a simple mistake. That's what you guys do. You made a whole video about how Amberlynn is racist and used her old Tumblr post. Don't like it when it's thrown back at you? The next event to happen was on the 28th of April. And on the 28th of April, the Sovereign decided to sign up for Kiwi Farms with a picture of herself as the avatar and began to talk to the farmers. Her original post read, Hey, I'm just popping in to say hello. I have been told by many people, including the hater community, to check you out. I guess they assumed I was already aware of your existence, though I've said in multiple videos that I am new to their ridiculous community. They don't have a reputation for fact-checking, so I'm not surprised they're wrong yet again. It took me a little while to find this place. I haven't been in any forms since Gia Online years ago. Anyways, I do typically take people's recommendations to look into things that's how I ended up with the Amberlynn Reed video. And people also requested the Michael B. Petty video, and now I'm here. I don't know why they're so obsessed with you guys or thought I wouldn't dare come here. I mean, come on. I'm a small 17k channel that took on 300,000 plus of the cultish nation on YouTube. You'd think, at the very least, they'd know by now that I am a ballsy bitch. But they have proven to not be the brightest bunch. Maybe I've overestimated them. After all, they turned my small request to not be hypocritical assholes into some overdramatic attack against them all. Anyways, fingers crossed they get it together. Didn't hide who I am because I'm no coward, and there's no need to lurk in the shadows. Just wanted to mark the occasion I found you guys. Have fun out there. Another commentary reaction channel came into the scene on April 30th, The Gaining Ground. The Gaining Ground went on to a now deleted stream where he, at least according to a post on Kiwi Farms, said people were coming for him for being friends with Charlie Gold. Also on this day, Amberlynn Reed did an impromptu live stream on Instagram where she criticized the reactors and how she is losing weight while they don't seem to be doing so. When are you going to react to young, dumb honey buns videos? I am not. <laughs> Taylor said, how does it feel to be doing better than the people who react to you? Thank you, Taylor, for the um, super chat. I appreciate it. Um, well, 
better in what sense? In the sense of like weight loss? I I don't know if that's true. I don't know how much Charlie Gold has lost because she don't talk about it, which is weird to me because that is what her channel originated, like how it started. The month of April ends with some more reactions posted and the Sovereign poked her head back in the community on YouTube on the 1st of May by responding to the haters who responded to her. Before we start, can someone please bring me the tears of my enemies? Thank you. You guys have kept me so hydrated this week. Namely DC Media Girl and Irate Alex. We will be hearing from DC Media Girl and Irate Alex. Who are you people? She responded to DC Media Girl's stream addressing her. If the Sovereign was really concerned about bullying on the internet and bullying of um, people like Amberlynn and Foodie Beauty, how about this? You're so tough, you're so honest, you're so fair and balanced. Okay, here's a challenge. Your next video, go after Kiwi Farms. Go after Kiwi Farms. Stop making your behavior okay because you see other people do it, if that makes sense. You know, on Kiwi Farms, there are thousands and thousands of pages devoted to Amberlynn Reed. There's an entire section there devoted to sightings of her ankles. What the fuck? I'm a YouTuber. YouTube is where I live. What do I look like walking into somebody else's house? A platform that I am not a part of and do not understand and trying to police them. A place I have no investment in. Does somebody come get grandma off the internet. <gasps> she told me to go after Kiwi Farm and then criticized Irate Alex for what she labeled as a lack of consistency. Also, Irate Alex went on live stream and during a section of his live stream, he compared my intelligence to that of Amberlynn Reed, which I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to take that because according to the Hater Nation Hyena Pack, Amberlynn Reed is incredibly intelligent, but I'm going to assume that she meant it in a negative way and I'm just sitting here thinking, I don't understand how you can even mention my intelligence when you and your friends seem to not even know how to use the at symbol on Twitter. She made some other decent points and even did a montage of the haters' nitpickiness to show that the animosity towards them is their own doing. Roll tape. Yeah, I, I have to give her props because I personally wouldn't show my underwear on YouTube if it looked like it was made for Sherman Clump, but that's just me. They look like boxers, but my underwear is definitely not small, but that, that is a parachute. Thank you to Lexington and then drive your fat two hours back home. And during that, she painted her nails. So you know what that means, she probably showered too, y'all. Oh my gosh. Hello, Chantel, what you're smelling is yourself. And probably the cheese curds that are still stuck in the little crevices that you don't clean. Yes, that's nasty. Why would you want to become a human fridge-sized dog when you use the restroom? <laughs> Maybe it's terrifying because it's water and it reminds her of a shower. Oh, she needs to repolish her nails. Guys, okay, so I just got out of the pool. She means I'm she just sure finished her bath. Worked. That's how I she bathes. Five, but I'm just confused. If she fits a five, who fits a six? Okay, so there's been this thing going around that her arm looks like a turkey leg from Disney, cause you know, their turkey legs are really big. And it sucks, like I agree with the statement, her arms are really big and my insecurity, one of my biggest insecurities outside of my midsection is my arms. So the fact that... <sighs> Next, the Sovereign and Irate Alex began to fight on Twitter. Irate Alex retweeted one of her tweets and wrote, calls us bullies, has an account on Kiwi Farms, lol. To which the Sovereign responded, I also have an account on OkCupid, Tinder, MySpace, Bumble, Gaia Online, Neopets, Yahoo, AOL, Hotmail, IMDB, DoorDash, Nickelodeon Online. Don't currently use them all, but I've been everywhere. I don't know why you think this impacts my behavior. Go back to your bedroom, Alex. While this was going around, around this time, Amberlynn Reed supposedly went live again and threw some more shade at the reaction channels. Yeah, Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I'd love to see the wave win from that weight loss channel. I love a good weight loss channel with no weigh-ins. 
This caused Life of a Free Spirit to go on camera and scream at Amberlynn Reed in defense of her and her friends to accuse Amberlynn Reed of being a gaslighter and a liar. Um, I'm relaxing and like enjoying my day. I just woke up not too long ago, but I just want to make a few quick points because it seems as though she is getting a lot of facts wrong either on purpose to gaslight us again or she is just full of shit, as always so first of all i like you guys know i consider charlie a, a good friend of mine i'm gonna start with charlie and, and go down because i think it'll get easier from there first of all how do you, you can say anything about charlie when charlie has actually posted her weight loss journey not only on youtube but on her instagram and her twitter all you have to do is follow charlie if you're really that concerned about her weight loss Period, okay? She also brought up the problem that she had with Amberlynn Reed and her family running a GoFundMe for a family member who had cancer. People are concerned about the Norma situation because you lied repeatedly. You did lie. Not only did you lie, you broke YouTube's community guidelines by asking your audience to watch through all of the ads. Not to mention when people finally got pissed and when they withdrew their money from the GoFundMe, oh, then her husband who he he was a part of the military right and he should have had the the trier to cover norma this the whole situation didn't need to happen there was a lot of drama along with this gofundme and i don't have enough information to talk about it there was some sketchy stuff going on so i'm not here to defend anything without knowing everything and that seems like a whole different rabbit hole the same day as this Charlie got on camera for another react to Amberlynn Reed, where she informed her audience that she was back under 300 pounds. I think, um, at least what I'm getting for, I think what she's saying is the same thing I went through in December. So when I had went under 300 pounds, I didn't celebrate it on YouTube, I was planning to, but in regular life, like in my real life off camera, I was celebrating. But in December, because of my actions and my sabotage, I went back over 300. And with that, after I went back under 300, I didn't celebrate it. There was nothing for me to celebrate because it was me fixing my wrong. So I think that's what she's referring to. Seeing that she's been up and down, just like I've had my up and down struggles, she doesn't feel the need to celebrate. At least that's what I'm getting from this and I could relate to that. For me personally, I'm not celebrating again and I don't wanna make it seem as though only certain milestones are worth celebrating, but for me, because it's been a battle for so long, there's only certain milestones that I'm willing to celebrate publicly. So for me, my next celebration probably, like I had said before, will be 250 pounds. And then after this, Charlie went on stream with yet another obese reaction channel, Cherry Berry, to quote, shoot the dingleberry together. The two talked about their weight loss and compared themselves to both Amberlynn Reed and Foodie Beauty. I think with Amber and at one point with Chantel as well, Chantel is a different case altogether. However, with Amber, I always, in my mind, known I had my own cycles in real life, not on YouTube. I have my own cycles. I'll do something for a few weeks, fall off, or self-sabotage all these things. And I feel because I've had probably countless amounts of cycles, it just takes that one time for you to finally build enough discipline to stop the cycles. So I just keep believing her when it seems as though it's not going to turn into another cycle. So with this time with her losing the 70, even though I did question one specific weigh-in, outside of that, I was just like, oh, this is it. This is finally her moment to leave all this other stuff behind. Charlie Gold then addressed why she thought she was the target of the girls on her Twitter, writing, it's fair game. I think Amberlynn Reed and Foodie Beauty are annoyed that I get support for doing some of the things they tried to do, but go backlash from it. Foodie Beauty tried to talk sh like Amberlynn Reed and got backlash. Amberlynn Reed tried to leave weight loss content behind after gaining over 200 pounds and got backlash. A day after all of this, Amberlynn Reed posted a video that pissed everyone off. A video called Dear Weight Loss Channels. The video itself, much like other Amberlynn Reed videos, got ratioed in the votes. She talked about herself, how she lost 70 pounds, and then tagged reaction channels Cherry Berry and Charlie Gold. And I'm gonna answer the last question first. Who do you want to see do this tag? So I do have some people listed down 
and I know some of them watch me and some of them don't. So this is more so just like, cool. I'd like to see them do this tag. So Jordan Shranks, love her. Obese to Beast, love him. Jennifer Gwen and hey girl, I do love her a lot. She's such a sweetheart. Amy's Life Journey, I wanna see Cherry Berry Weight Loss do this. And Charlie Gold, I would love to see I don't watch their videos anymore, but if they did this, I would love to see it. I really wanna see their answers. I wanna get to know them better within their weight loss journey because I think that's why both of their channels started, so. Cherry Berry and Charlie Gold then proceeded to respond to Amber Lynn Reed's video on Twitter. Cherry Berry tweeted, I'll try to play her game with her when I got time this week, smiley face. What she doesn't realize it, it won't even bother me like she wants it to. I'm secure in who I am, obese or not. She hates reacts, but has sat on live like three to four hours a day this week reacting to reacts. So, she continued in another tweet. Amberlynn Reed wants us all to forgive and forget things that are long gone, happened within a year. But she's still holding on to this 89 pounds of 2014 every other video. And Charlie Gold responded by tweeting, Wait, where's the Amberlynn Reed from the live streams? Is she okay? At least my attitude and pettiness is consistent. I guess I'll play along, rolling eye emoji. I also found people from around this time coming at Charlie Gold for a lack of weight loss on Twitter. The tables were somewhat turning. Well, not turning. People still didn't like Amberlynn Reed and Foodie Beauty. But it seems more and more people were beginning to dislike Charlie Gold as well. The next person to come for Charlie Gold was popular train wreck Nick Akato Avocado. It'd be hard to sum up him. I made it for you with love. Stop! Just for Stop you. it! Oh, just for you. Just Stop. For you. Ow. enjoy it. Ow. You, you forgot. Stop! Stop! Quickly in a video. But he vaguely talked about Amberlynn Reed standing up for herself against Charlie Gold this same day. And there's this other. I wouldn't really call her a YouTuber. I'm gonna throw some shade now. I wouldn't even call her a YouTuber. She goes unnamed. Actually, both of them go unnamed. But all she does is watch this other person's videos about what their vlog, just living their life. And she's over there like, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. You stink. I can smell you from here. That's her content. Now, I've had many channels taken off YouTube um, with my connections. And I'm very blessed to have my connections, but some people don't have those connections. But you don't even need connections on YouTube now for YouTube to even figure it out without even having to tell them. Because ever since they changed their policies, which I think is great, you can't target people repetitively. Okay. If you're not giving feedback in a you know constructive way, they can view it as mean-spirited that distresses the community. YouTube's allowed to come up with their community terms, so they think that's Distressing, and I think it is too. To make your channel about someone else every friggin' day, over, 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 over. Kiwi Farms then looked further into Charlie Gold's weight loss promises from months ago, where she promised to weigh in at 250 pounds. They also detailed her past giveaways and weight loss support to others. On the fourth of the month of May, Charlie Gold uploaded a video responding to Amberlynn Reed's video on the Hater channels. She titled this video, Amberlynn Reed Crocodile Tears Over Reaction Channels. Reaction. In this video, Amberlynn Reed talks about medical issues, about not being able to fit in a CAT scan. Also, Charlie Gold discusses why she specifically has no pity for Amberlynn Reed. For the average person. I do not feel bad for these tears. <sighs> Get out of here. Because any event in Amberlynn's life, even something like this, is worth being monetized to her. And that's why I don't feel bad for her anymore. But she, Charlie, does feel bad that she has no empathy when she sees Amberlynn Reed cry due to Amber's past actions. I wouldn't want this so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't I buy it. I've for so long, guys. And I actually feel bad that I don't buy it, but I don't. <laughs> you believe truly. <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> it would take me a long time before I believe this girl ever again. I also wanted to note that Charlie Gold also decided not to comment 
on the false allegation claims against Amber that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The last time she cried and I second guessed myself for some time and I talked privately about it was the live stream she did the other day when she was speaking about Casey. Because of that live stream and the way she cried and I didn't feel like it was calculated, for me personally, I cannot speak for anyone else. For me personally, I will not speak on that incident ever again with my chest, as a matter of fact, because you know what? I wasn't there. Shannon Everett, aka Shaquana Jefferson, made a now deleted video on what she perceived as hypocrisy from Charlie Gold and the haters. The video is now gone, but screenshots of her comments on the video remain. In one comment, she writes, I totally agree. Callie has said a lot about me the last year, even though I have legit never seen a video of hers, never spoken a word to her, and she cringes me out how she is so desperate for relevancy, she leeches on to everyone else's beef for content. I thought I was legit crazy until I saw some of her clips on Citrine's channel. She has my crazy beat for sure. Charlene is Hater Nation's very own Amberlynn Reed. About time the mask completely falls on the floor as she is exposed and clowned for the complete hypocrite and liar that she had always been from day one. I have a feeling this is only the beginning of her fall from grace. You can't make a living critiquing a fat b while pretending to be on a weight loss journey, gain weight, and have there be no solid repercussions. Look how it turned out for Amber Lynn. Next, on May 5th, 2020, Charlie Gold posted a response video to Amber Lynn's weight loss tag. She titled it, Amber Lynn Reed, I Tag You Back, Since You Said You'd Watch This. Reaction. In the video, she tells Amber Lynn Reed she'd prefer to sell out to being a reaction channel than be a weight loss failure. Let me remind you, we both, me and you, started out as weight loss channels. However, I'd rather be known as a weight loss channel that sold out to reactions than the weight loss channel that went on to gain over 200 pounds while gaslighting, manipulating, disrespecting not only her audience, but herself. She then talks about how she had lost over 100 pounds herself in response to Amber Lynn Reed talking about losing 70 pounds. And she ends the video by asking Amber Lynn Reed to react to her darker side of obesity video. Charlie finally did something to get nearly everyone to turn on her on May 5th, 2020. She, instead of attacking her usual targets, decided to turn her attention onto the channel Chikara Transformations. She tweeted out on this day, Chikara Transformations, I can't find her on Twitter, has a lot of f***ing mouth lately. We may not agree on certain things, but I stayed respectful. Calling at Life of a Free Spirit a dollar store Sith? Stop playing before I start dragging you like the dog-faced basset hound you are. And below was Chikara commenting a joke about Callie looking like a dollar store Sith Lord on a Kate Winslet video. The thing here is that the women Charlie had insulted before were deemed okay. They were failures. They selfishly ate food on camera for cash and said problematic things. But Chikara? Chikara is fit. She is married. She, by comparison to Amberlynn Reed, Foodie Beauty, and to a lesser extent, Charlie, is a success. The reaction to this tweet was very negative. Callie also joined in to go after other haters and tweeted out, Yes, I will say this publicly. Don't associate me with the gaining ground or Chikara transformations. I'm not afraid to say it with my chest, unlike some people. To all the reaction and commentary channels who think this is funny by engaging with these racist and malicious accounts, thinking that it's just tea. Trust me, laugh while it's funny now, because the same will happen to you. They've done this to everyone for years. And she also tweeted out a screen cap of a comment the gaining ground said on a video. Callie would continue to frantically tweet out at the perceived attack on her by two YouTubers who never spoke to her, writing, Alexa, play Eminem, not afraid. LOL, they all want to fight, fight, until it's time to fight, fight. Also, y'all can watch who the f y'all want to watch. I'm just saying who not to associate me with. Still haven't seen a bitch say anything about my character. The Amberlynn Reed I Tag You Back video would be the last video Charlie uploaded for a, quite a while, but this Charlie vs. Chikara and Callie vs. Gaining Ground was referred to by Kate Winslet as Hater Nation Civil War. Chikara, unbothered by being referred to as a basset hound, decided to issue her own challenge to mock the failed weight loss channels. She commented on a Citrine Dream video, announcing she will do a week challenge of eating only 1,500 calories a day, no exercise, and writes, Wanna bet I lose weight? She then proceeded to post a video where she vaguely addressed the people who disliked her. I am just here with a quick public service announcement. Me and Eva are getting a dog. No, just joking, just joking. And then talks about her challenge. 
Facebook was the next place people turned on Charlie Gold for coming for Chikara. With people criticizing Charlie Gold for acting like she was the queen of the community and not wanting others to have opinions that she didn't allow, the gaining ground, who I mentioned earlier, decided to shoot next at the Mean Girls of Hater Nation. And in a video he posted on the 6th, he decided to cosplay as a life of a free spirit and throw a bit of silly shade before reacting to Foodie Beauty. The crazy Nini Loves Reacts lady also came in on this day and posted her magnum opus in hating Charlie Gold. Who are you, Charlie, to tell any of these girls what to put in their mouth, you oversized b She talked about criticism of Charlie calling the girls racist. And then when these girls try to take up for themselves, you want to pull the race card. No, 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 my friend. Those girls are not racist when they take up for themselves. They're not racist. Like, if I was Amber, if I was Chantel, I'd have been at your front door. Like, I'd have said, I will meet you anywhere, anytime, any place. Let's do this. Charlie would delete her tweet about Chikara, and then tweet explaining why she deleted the tweet, writing, I hate deleting tweets. My main point was, you say you would never be mean like us. No, you just would never do it on your channel. Say what you want, but at least I don't hide my attitude and pettiness under troll videos. You're healthier, but that was Chantelish, just whack. She laughed at a joke in a comment section. Someone even pointed out that the dollar store Sith joke that they were all melting down about was a quote from the video to which Charlie responded, Chikara has made it a point to mention over and over that she doesn't have to be mean to get her point across. Um, what about that dollar store comment was nice? So you'll support a channel who does that while sitting on your channel saying, I would never, that's my point. Also, while this was going on, young dumb Honeybun posted probably the most important anti-Amber Lynn Reed video to date. One where she overreacted to nine-year-old Facebook statuses of Amber Lynn Reed. I hate girls who think they're hot when they're clearly not. And then in the comments she says, no, I don't. Other people think I'm hot. <laughs> Jesus. More creators continued to call out Charlie Gold for being a hypocrite. Peanut Gallery came out with a video on the 9th calling Charlie a hypocrite. A small YouTuber, Salima Inspires, released a video on the 11th of May to call Charlie a hypocrite as well. Sweetie, I understand this is how you make your coin. So by all means, do what you gotta do. But the fake concern for Amberlynn Reed, it's just, it's, it's like, that fake concern. And, and the fact that, that, that people think that you haven't actually lost the weight that's unfortunate. I don't know if you lost the weight. You gotta, you gotta show me numbers before I, I can say you have or haven't. I can't. From, from looking at you, I'm gonna be real. It does not look like you've lost the weight from the last time I watched one of your videos. So. In the background of this, gaining ground started to become more in the foreground of the anti-hater and hater war. On the 14th of May, it was noted that he had now allegiance with the evil bigot Foodie Beauty by them mutually following each other on Instagram. The first really well thought out Charlie Gold video came out on May 20th by small YouTuber Rose Analysis. I have referenced this video before, and I don't mean to say that the Sovereign's video was bad or anything, but Rose Analysis put out a video that really embodied everyone's feelings of the growing dislike of Charlie Gold by summing up the hypocrisy over the last year. Some new information that I gathered from this video that I have not mentioned earlier was that in this video, Rose points out that Charlie is a fan of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. And she tends to hold on to Amberlynn's past mistakes as well. And I totally understand accountability. We do need to hold people accountable for their actions. But where I get a little bit confused is that Charlie supports very openly Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, who have very colorful pasts, no pun intended, but I don't understand how she's able to look past all of that that they've done. For someone to call out others for perceived toxicity and bigotry, to then support two creators with extremely toxic past is, well, rich. Shane Dawson has years behind him doing blackface and using slurs. Meanwhile, Jeffree Star has harassed women on the street while screaming the n-word at them. Shut up, you 
I'd say two YouTubers with millions of subscribers. Spreading this is a lot worse for the goal of equality than Foodie Beauty commenting on a small compilation channel with a questionable profile picture and some unsavory content. Not defending fatty gold here. Rose Analysis also talks about how Charlie critiques others for being lazy while making the laziest form of content, reactions. Which kind of leads me to my next point, and it's the fact that she calls their content lazy. And don't get me wrong, Amberlynn's content is lazy, Chantel's content is lazy, but Charlie, honestly, your content is lazy as well. They deserve this. They pride on themselves. You deserve all this game. That's just like such a warped mentality. Anyway, that's my opinion on this. Already knows. So, um, I had a little, okay, not a little, a big, if you will. And says that Charlie doesn't educate people with eating issues, but shames them. I've seen her bring this up, and the thing is, that is part of addiction. So instead of using this as like a reference point for like education or awareness, and like this is a sign of addiction in somebody, she uses it as a point to like make fun of her or shame her, which I think is really concerning because many people who suffer from addiction have to hide it from their family, from their friends, from their spouse. Be There's more to the video and I recommend it. It's a different perspective if you enjoy hater content to see why others do not like the content or believe what is happening has been going too far. I'll link it below. So Charlie was kind of canceled, at least for now. Let's get this straight. The only person who could cancel you is you. But people were getting as critical of her as they were to the girl she based her channel on. Now the attention of the anti-haters turned to the next target, Young Dumb Honeybun. Young Dumb Honeybun released merch on May 23rd, 2020, featuring a bad grammar quote from an Amberlynn Reed stream, where Amberlynn called someone or something a despectful piece of sh**. This mess up in pronunciation of the word disrespectful obviously sent the haters into a tailspin of hee hee, ha ha, dumb 600 pound girl is dumb. Young Dumb put this quote on some merch with a doodle of Amberlynn Reed below it. Q, hater nation meltdown number. Oh, I've lost count. All the anti-haters piled on to hate on this merch. But not only that, but Young Dumb's own audience thought this was too far. People who had followers within the community began to call out Young Dumb. Alex's Shook mocked her. Hi guys, I know I received a lot of backlash recently regarding the merch I put out with the doodle of Anne Boleyn. I just wanted to say that my merch is high quality and if you wanted a five euro jumper made in a Chinese sweatshop, I suggest Primark. I'm an intelligent young woman, I have a college degree. I'm beautiful, men call me Selena Gomez. I'm so much better than Anne Boleyn. So, buy my merch. And the gaining ground came in hard at this time of the merch and decided himself the moral police of the hater community. I'm going to timeline the events here as best as possible. I apologize if I get anything wrong in this video, there's a lot. The gaining ground shoots the first shot with a vague tweet about the merch, writing, Profiting off of your humor and creativity is one thing. Being lazy and profiting off of sheer cruelty and laziness is another. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Reaction channel on program situation came in to combat the gaining ground. She wrote, Oh, that's what this is about? Yeah, people have been making merch of these professional trolls for a while. Even Destiny bought a comic making fun of Amberlynn Reed. To which the conversation devolved in the two going back and forth. Then small creator Leo the Lard produced a dog themed video about the merch situation. It was cute, but it got ratioed. Probably because people didn't dislike Young Dumb enough to accept Leo comparing her to Amberlynn Reed. A day passed after the merch and Charlie Gold weighs in and says that she pretty much doesn't need to address everything in the community. Fair enough. Jakara then weighs in in a comment section of a Kate Winslet video on the merch, writing, I can't believe people actually hate Amber that much to go this far and A, create this or B, purchase this. 400 plus comments and most are positive over the design. And the gaining ground joins in to talk about how much the merch upset him. Then, Young Dumb decides to delete her post about the merch, but says she isn't taking the merch down. Then, she posts to her community tab again and says she is listening to the people who thought the merch was over the line and took on the criticism and redesigned the merch to not feature a drawing of Amberlynn Reed in it. That's fine and dandy, but Hater Nation and Anti-Hater Nation, they don't keep moving like yo girl, Young Dumb Honeybun does. Tasha Thoughts weighed in with an explanation video on the situation on this day as well, to kind of sum up the drama to anyone confused by it. 
Some good news comes though. On the 25th of May, Michael B. Petty, who hadn't uploaded any content in months, announced to his 70k subscribers that he will be returning soon to make videos. The gaining ground wasn't done moral policing the moral police who were policing people on the morality of talking about fat girls on the internet. Does that sentence make sense? Well, the next target of the moral moral police was on program situation, who tweeted out writing, would a depressed person make this with a video of foodie beauty? This was a no-no for the gaining ground. The gaining ground had to defend his queen, Chantel, and responded with, What does depression look like, Doc? I can see why you defended YD's hate merch now. And no, I wasn't creeping after unfollowing you. Someone I follow liked this post. And of course, Charlie retweeted, I rest my case. This caused an argument slash discussion on whether or not joking about depression is appropriate. Other haters would weigh in on this super ethical question. The gaining ground just goes wild here and starts calling out Charlie Gold for liking on program's tweet, I think. He was just completely out of f to give. It starts insulting Charlie Gold for being a hypocrite, who hasn't even really said anything at this point. And this is where things get weird. The gaining ground is weird, don't get me wrong. Spending this amount of time to attack another reaction channel over, at worst, an insensitive doodle, is strange. But then someone decided to spin the narrative to, the gaining ground is now a sexist doxer. The Gaining Ground argues with someone on Twitter named Nancy Liu. The Gaining Ground points out that Nancy Liu, who is apparently a mom, has been spending all this time defending Charlie Gold on Twitter instead of spending time with her family. Nancy Liu then begins to cry that the Gaining Ground is attacking her family. Yes, one person being oversensitive on Twitter is no big deal. But then bigger people in the community began to also run with this narrative out of nowhere that the Gaining Ground is a doxer who attacks women's kids. Where did the doxing allegation come from? Well, I believe it's because someone who followed the gaining ground found Nancy Liu's Facebook from reverse Google image searching her profile picture. So the gaining ground had to take responsibility for some random on Twitter. Like the two, gaining ground and Nancy Liu, are both being crazy here. But to spin a Twitter argument to this series of an allegation, an allegation that is a no-no in any community, even a more reasonable one, it's insane. The Gaining Ground is now leading the anti-Charlie Gold brigade on Twitter, championing the people who believe the woman to be a hypocrite. Charlie Gold is ignoring it, though she is tweeting out vaguely about how unbothered she is that the Gaining Ground, someone she shouted out before, has gone into absolute war against her because of essentially a drawing she didn't do or even partake in. Meanwhile, young dumb Honeybun was unscathed and tweeted out on the 27th. Child, I don't have time for clapbacks. I'ma keep it pushing. Just secured a lease for my new London apartment on the 28th floor. Peace and love, heart. The gaining ground gave more insight to this little coup of hater nation in the comment section of a Kate Winslet video writing, actually started with young dumb honey bun and Charlie Gold sending me private DMs two weeks after she was being a hypocrite when Callie lost her mind. But let's go. Despite the gaining ground not doxing or harassing kids, the Hater Nation followers continued to blame him and told him to fix his fan base, despite him telling them not to do that stuff. That's literally all he can do. But Hater Nation, despite being built upon laughing at mentally ill obese women on the internet, has a really strict moral standard. Charlie still hadn't directly stepped in or said anything, but she was retweeting people spinning the narrative that the gaining ground was encouraging targeted harassment to children. Everyone kind of eventually smoothed it out though, sort of, kind of. But then the gaining ground goes on a stream and announces he will do another live stream later that day, and he has receipts. The gaining ground does do a second live stream, though he did take it down. I can't seem to find the stream anymore, but if I do after I finish writing this, then I'll put in clips to help emphasize what I am summarizing, which I did get the summary from Kiwi Farms. The gaining ground says he's not racist. Don't you dare ever call me racist, Charlie Gold. You pull that crap again? Well, let's just save that for after. Look at the receipts. Oh, see, I get all I get all crazy at how I even have to do this because these women have to manufacture such hatred against anybody who goes against them. He talks about the drama involved with the commentary community. He also does something that was admittedly creepy. He talked about living close to Charlie. Chantel enters the chat and eventually super chats. The reaction community is beason. Gaining ground goes on more about hating the big haters. Charlie Gold and Michael B. Petty. So, um... Yeah, they hate each other. Uh, Kiwi, Citrine, Charlie, they, uh, uh, Michael B. Petty, who apparently is like the one who pioneered calling women fat uh, and just starting wars with people who are not creating content for you. When he gets Foodie Beauty on the live stream, she's high as frick. Um, yes, I can. Do you have feedback when you speak? 
I'm really, I can hear you and I'm really high, so. Okay, that's fine, you do you, you do you. They're all gonna go crazy. Look, she was high, you do you, who cares? Chantel expresses that she enjoys watching the reaction community melt down, but also emphasized that she didn't want anyone to get hurt and adds. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like whenever at first, a part of me was just like laughing so hard that like, reaction community or whatever is like fighting with itself it's kind of like a chuckle moment but in, in all honesty i don't want to see like anybody get hurt and it just i don't really don't have any hatred for anybody and that's i just good. that's good you know that's part of like growing as a person you, you just can and it's like it's so easy to get sucked into it and it's so much harder to get out so no, you're doing I appreciate good. it, but just let's just like all laugh at farts and just move on, you know? <laughs> like, seriously. Wise words. The stream ends with the gaining ground emphasizing that he knows where Charlie Gold lives. Just remember though, Charlie, as your people are doxing me. Just remember. Remember things. You're not some stranger 55 states away. I know there's only 50. Shut up. You're apparently my friend's neighbor. I would have told you that sooner, but I didn't like you. So when she told me this, I was like, I ain't going to tell her. I don't want to meet her. <laughs> I'm good. Just rein your mob in. Because I can handle a lot. And I will always come out with my guns blazing. Grow up. Which is creepy. I don't think he meant it as a threat, but it did come off as bad. Hater Nation, of course, ran with this to dismiss him as a totally creepy weirdo. While the streaming was going on, people were kind of laughing at it and with it. But my favorite response was from Charlie herself, who tweeted, I love being the Carol Baskin to your Joe Exotic. But yeah, the stream was fun, Hater Nation was melting down, and it was all set in motion by one dumb normie joke. After being part of the drama, the day after the stream, Chikara chimed in, basically telling Hater Nation that she'll comment on whatever the f she wants. So, part of the reason I wanted to change my tune is because I started to wake up to the problems within Hayden Nation and the hypocrisy that's happening, the, the double standards, one rule for you, another rule for me. It's okay for me to be morbidly obese and have all the excuses in the world like not having a gym. I watch YouTube. I have a good sense of humor. I watch some channels that are parody channels. Great example, a wonderful creator called Kate Winslet. She does these little parodies and they're really funny. She does it really well. She picks good music and the edits are just funny. They're not malicious, they're just funny. There was a video where I rephrased a joke that she made and I put laughing face emojis about, or about underneath it. The joke wasn't even my joke. The joke was her joke and Queen of Hayden Nation herself, Miss Charlie Gold, decided that, apparently, <sighs> Chico Transformation, I can't find her on Twitter. That's because I'm not on Twitter. I have Instagram and I'm on here. If you've got something to say to me, why not make a video or drop it in my comments down below. Uh, has a lot of f***ing mouth lately. We may not agree on certain things, but I stay respectful. Calling love from free spirit a dollar store Sith. Stop playing before I start dragging you like the dog-faced bastard hound you are. Now, the fact that she has to insult me on my appearance means she's lost an argument. I can, I can assure you that I don't need to resort to tactics like that. I'm not even gonna talk shit about her here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enlighten you on information that's out there and you, as a viewer, should go and watch it, should go and read some things and then make your own decision on what kind of wholesome person she is. First of all, I can say whatever the I want on whosoever channel I want. You're not my mom, you're not my boss. We're not friends, we never spoke in DMs. So I can do what I want. I can look at whosoever channel I want. You do not control me. You may control other people, you do not control me. She also reveals something. I didn't see this before while looking into this. Charlie posted a follower's DMs to try to show, well, I'll let Jakara describe it. DMs are being published where somebody who I don't even know is apparently talking shit about me together with Miss Gold who is clearly actively trying to turn people against me because I'm such a horrible person. Why am I a horrible person? Where am I a hypocrite? Do I not lead the life that I preach? Unlike you, do you lead the life you preach? No you don't. Where's your f***ing way in? We're still waiting for it. But publishing DMs of as a viewer 
who wasn't even a fan of mine, agreeing with you that what I said was inappropriate, a joke, a joke, I laughed at a joke, it wasn't even my joke, that has, why, why, why do you think that's gonna bother me? I don't even know this person. People can talk about me if they want. I talk about people in DMs, that's what happens. People talk shit. In the description of the video, Chikara had a link to the Kiwi thread for Charlie Gold, so viewers could read what people dug up about Charlie Gold and make their own decision. This became a point Charlie later tried to use as a gotcha to Chikara, claiming by posting a link, Chikara was spreading her docs. The problem here is that people outside of Charlie's circle at this point don't really view sharing a link to a public forum as being morally reprehensible enough to care. I mean, Jakara didn't even dox Charlie to begin with. She posted a link. Not only that, but there were other creators who sourced Kiwi Farms before that that Charlie Gold had supported. Tone McKinley, a creator in Charlie's recommendation links in her description, sourced his entire Foodie Beauty documentary to Kiwi Farms. Oh, but it's okay to use the site when it's about Chantel. The next person nitpicked in the community was Michael B. Petty, who got a call out not only on Twitter, but even on the Hater Nation Facebook discussion groups for making a joke. He wrote on Twitter, I once ran into Charlie Gold in a bathroom, and while I was peeing in a urinal, she came up behind me and stuck her finger inside of me, and I instantly came. She then leaned over to me and whispered into my ear, no one will ever believe you. People took this as a joke about sexual assault, and this serious issue can never be joked about, according to the hater community. Like I said, enough people cared about this tweet for there to be a post video on it, and people discussing it on various boards. Shaquana Jefferson commented on Michael B. Petty getting flack for misspeaking. Remember her? She called Charlie dark as in 2019, and became the boogeyman of the community. She wrote, Hmm, it's okay for him to use the wrong phrase or word things wrong, and he gets a free pass. But when I say Charlie Gold's skin was dark as aka dark as f as f compared to the foundation she was wearing. Racism. Did I get a free pass from Michael? Well, no. But he wants a free pass because he also spoke wrong or used a scenario that sounded bad. See how it all works? Everyone starts fighting at this point on Twitter. Charlie Gold is fighting Peanut. Irate Alex is fighting Charlie Gold and Shakara. Peanut is acting like anti-hater nation is some weird cult, and everyone is probably in everyone's DMs. And as per usual, we here at the station want to leave a little advice from us to you. I cannot believe that we are having to say this again. If these are all up in your DMs, <laughs> they even you. Uh-uh. Listen here. We're gonna tell you something. Take some advice from this old woman, okay? Don't say nothing in a DM, in an email, in a phone call, nothing. Purse face to face, nothing. Because you don't never know when these are going to be recording. It's like the KGB and the CIA and all that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in DMs in this community. It's wild. I love it. The anti-Charlie crowd was growing, still nowhere near the size of anti Amberlynn or anti foodie beauty haters, but it was still growing. I saw more and more negativity directed towards her during her break, as she hadn't upload around this time regularly, like she usually did. Not only was Hater Nation melting down, but now there was something bad happening to Amberlynn Reed, their favorite subject. It seems around this time she began to get sick. And she was getting a lot more support now. The haters reacted on Twitter with sympathy over this, with a lot of responses telling them off for acting like they cared about Amber's health now. At the end of May, the gaining ground, after three days of not melting down, came back to Twitter to start shooting back at Charlie and Callie, writing, We have the screenshots. Your deleted tweets? We have them. That was Wednesday. Today is Saturday. Is Photoshop that hard? He also wrote, Life of a free spirit went on today to claim I am an enraged white person who just had a mission to turn people against her because she's black. Also then called out a sub and made ridiculous claims about a plot to take Charlie down. Oh, and she has all these screenshots. Okay, I cannot verify if Callie did or did not make these wild accusations. He also posted around this time to his community tab about getting a lawyer. And then he just kept retweeting this phrase, don't engage, just document. Charlie Gold eventually posted to her community tab about the gaining ground thing. I have no idea when this was. I found the post in an Aphrodite's Peach video posted on the 30th of May, where she said this. Hello guys, I know I've been gone for a bit. I'm still taking care of a few personal matters. However, I'm very aware of the live stream that the gaining ground made, seeing that I was watching him spiral on Twitter for over 24 hours nonstop. 
Unfortunately, he lied many times, but I plan to clear all of that up. Gaining ground deleting his Twitter after that livestream was very smart, but the internet is forever. Sometimes remaining silent works in my favor. There were a few screenshots he purposely cropped to fit his narrative, and he also didn't read out the complete DM conversations for that exact reason. I have them posted on my Twitter, x Charlie Gold x. I know a lot of people believe what he has said. I can understand that. I would believe him too. He's never shown any sign of being a dishonest man, in my opinion, until recently. A lot of people are asking where this stemmed from and how it started. I have no idea. What I do know is this is someone I've heard say many times he doesn't care about Chantel or Amberlynn Reed's past, and he essentially is just here to have a good time and roast them, because they have done nothing personally to him. Fair and true. My past docs, that includes my mugshot, is different I'm assuming, because I must have done something personal to him, right? And to be very clear, I did not send anyone to dox the gain ground. That was another bold-faced lie. Nor did I accuse him of being racist. I retweeted someone who pointed out how tone deaf it was to say I'm the queen of KFC. And I was hiding out at a chicken restaurant. Also, the closest KFC to me is not close at all. And the closest Chick-fil-A is even further. That explanation is complete BS. I have way more to share of what transpired on Twitter, but I will start with what pictured below. I am many things that can be criticized, but when you start lying and using the tactic, bullying a bully, you start to lose your argument. For those supporters and creators who witnessed most of this and reached out to me privately, thank you. And to the supporters who are upset with me, I definitely understand. I will make it all make sense very soon, without cropping out the things that don't suit my narrative. Not responding is a loss, and responding is a loss. You can't yell hypocrisy while being a hypocrite yourself. See you guys soon, stay safe. Okay, the next hater joins the anti-hater squad, with Alex's Shook responding to a Gaining Ground tweet on the 30th of May about the hypocrisy of Charlie Gold. The Gaining Ground writes, I called Charlie Gold out on her hypocrisy, you're a racist. At Alex's Shook calls Charlie Gold out on her hypocrisy, you're transphobic. Is anyone seeing a pattern? Alexis Shook writes, Charlie Gold is holding two women accountable for their weight loss, or lack thereof, and we haven't seen any progress from her. That was promised. Transparency plus accountability is what we want, you promised. Days after this, or around this time, Charlie Gold posted a life update, basically saying she's not avoiding the conversation directed towards her, but she has a lot in her life going on, like sick family. She also talks about the black community in the post, and the civil rights-focused protests happening around the US during this time, due to the the death of George Floyd. This was a time a lot of large content creators spoke on Black Lives Matter to raise awareness. But just a summary of this post, Charlie is tired and needs some time. Heck, life happens, Charlie. People can take breaks. Do what you need to do. The reception to the Life Update post was not the most positive. One comment read, Make it make sense, Charlie. You have been living on Twitter accusing folks of heinous things because people have called your toxicity out. While I can sympathize with the fact that you have sick family member, do not play like you haven't spent countless hours trying to drag and accuse two people who did nothing other than defend themselves and refuse to kiss your I hope your family members get better, and I hope you realize that we see you and you do owe everyone answers, especially those of us who donated to your GoFundMe and charity who are feeling very much scammed by you. You also said the receipts for the suit prevention charity are here on your YouTube page. Where are they? Gone back eight months and have found nothing. Oh yeah, there was a GoFundMe scam people talked about. Well, it wasn't a scam per se. Charlie Gold, before she hit big, started a crowdfunding thing to raise money so she could go to Hawaii to lose weight. She would tweet out begging Oprah to help her. She never raised the money, and she would address the criticism against her on the GoFundMe later. Also, as for the comment about the charity, from what I can tell, Charlie showed proof that she donated to charity earlier on in the year, and she would post a receipt later on as well. That being said, the other criticism about her heinous accusations against anyone who criticized her, well, yeah. Callie would also go live on this date to accuse all the channels criticizing her and Charlie of racism. In fact, what's happening to me right now, yes indeed, is racist because I'm sorry. If it's going to take an enraged white person for you to change your thoughts about me and for you to, especially if I haven't said anything in weeks for a reason, if it's going to take an outraged white person who gaslit the out of all of you, this entire community, and y'all fell for it, hook, line, sinker. And I'm putting together a video to, to be very clear, because I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna try and gaslight me 
like and say, oh, we don't see what you're talking about. We don't see what the problem is. You're obviously crazy. No, I'm very woke. I see everything. In fact, a lot of people DM me a lot of shit. Chantal signal boosted a lot of problematic people and a lot of problematic accounts. If it wasn't for her bitterness against reaction channels, and if it wasn't for her stubbornness when she was going off on her community tab, a lot of these racist accounts wouldn't have the attention that they do now. Because it's bad enough that they were just being fed off of some little website. But like, she had to go and signal boost, shining for Christ. She had to go and signal boost, fatty gold. She had to go and signal boost, Citroen Dream. She had to go and signal boost all of those accounts out of her own spite. And if you look at any of those channels and who that, that little group and who they associate with, I'm sorry, there's no way in hell you can tell me that their content is not racist. And the only reason that they're trying to just now add in other white creators is so they can hide it better. Same day as the Cali stream, Amber Lynn Reed, after crying that she may have cancer, posted a pre-recorded video addressing Hater Nation. In the video, she talks about how toxic Hater Nation is and how she is not worse than Hater Nation, Kiwi Farms, or Charlie Gold. Too much, it's disgusting, and I just, you guys have to realize that I, as a person, am nowhere near as bad as the people who are part of Hater Nation and Kiwi Farms and reaction channels that call people, you know, sodium whales and saying things about cheese curds. It's not cute. This video was negatively received and lost her a lot of support she was given earlier, but she did make one good point. Us as morbidly obese women, we are a target. Even if you're obese yourself, you wanna target us. That's just the way life works because there are worse people on YouTube who don't have reaction channels, who don't get this type of cruelty. It's unbelievable. I'm a small channel and there are channels with millions of people who have done horrible things, who aren't even sorry, who haven't changed at all. So more haters drop out after this, sort of. Zachary Michael posts that he is taking a break for his mental health. Also, young dumb Honeybun makes an announcement that she won't be reacting to Amber Lynn again till Amber Lynn is healthy. Girl, Amber has never been healthy before, and that didn't stop anyone. Also, Young Dumb has plenty of previous posts on her channel informing people she does not care about Amber's health in the least. Anti-hater Nini Love Reacts also jumped ship on this day. Also, Young Dumb Honeybun caring about Amber Lynn Reed was totally thrown out the window at the beginning of June when she saw Amber Lynn's Dear Hater Nation video and she tweeted out, how do you just throw all the support you got the last two days out the window like that? Should have left that one in the drafts. Belinda Carroll, who will become one of my favorite people in this community later on, also did something on the 1st of June. She committed a sin, according to certain Hater Nation member. She tweeted out that she didn't really like Callie, to which Callie responded, before accusing me of going off on the free spirits for something stupid. Remember what's going on behind the scenes and reflect on why you're condoning such bullshit behavior. And attached were some screenshots, some of them being pretty bad and other ones I don't understand what's going on. She continued, I am tired of being gaslit for being passionate about the racism, oppression, and hatred that I've endured as a black woman and a black creator, both in real life and online. The racism in the Amber Lynn Reed and Foodie Beauty community is rampant and people excuse it by calling it satire and criticism. I see you. She writes again, honestly, you. If you're still trying to defend the blatant racism I've been fighting against for months, you just want to go, let's go. She continues, and the fact that you can't even be specific about said events shows your ignorance. I will never be silenced about racism, hate, or prejudice, especially during these times. Remember what the f it is you're defending. And attached was a video of Shani for Christ. Belinda saying she didn't particularly like Callie and that Callie can't handle criticism resulted in Callie comparing her to Shani for Christ, 
if you're new to my channel, I recommend you watching my video on her. That's a ridiculous comparison. Then she decided that Kate Winslet was racist too. What you fail to understand is that Shani, Fatty Gold, Citrine Dream, Kate Winslet, and others all have their association in common. They are indeed all racist and defend their racism under the guise of criticism, like you. I don't want racist subs, period and attached her screenshots, one saying, As your prophet, I told you the tides were turning. Another screenshot read, We'll be here waiting with open arms when you return. Another screenshot was a shot of Hater Nation now hiring. Citrine Dream, one of the channels Callie accused of racism, eventually reacted to her accusations, and in the comments came in Foodie Beauty, who wrote, These people, including this one, have done nothing with their time on YouTube except fat shame, bully, and insult Amber Lynn and I, and they have the nerve to cry about being criticized. They sure can dish it out, but they can't take it. No sympathy for any of these people. The only followers they have are even more vile than they are. Go to their comment sections for examples on this. And newsflash, just because someone criticizes you doesn't make them a racist. Callie got under more fire from the anti-haters, including the chubby chihuahua Leo the Lard, who made a video on Callie's accusations. The video pointed out further hypocrisy in the hater community. The main one I haven't mentioned is that Callie would criticize Amberlynn Reed. Which... In all honesty, I mean, clickbaiting mental health and suicide is gross. And yet, post videos and tweets that are very similar in nature. Even Sovereign called out Callie on Twitter, writing, At Life of a Free Spirit, stop using the race card against everyone who dislikes you. You're actually truly just a dislikable person. Don't trivialize. The struggle we both know is real, especially in these times, to benefit yourself. Signed, a black woman. Irate Alex also had a falling out with Callie on this day as well. Callie's meltdown also got her a spot in the second episode of the new show, Hater Nation News Network, or HNNN, run by Belinda Carroll, the woman I mentioned before. It's a goofy YouTube show that lightheartedly goes over all these ridiculous situations. Now for the hater news. It seems our girl Callie, or life of a free spirit, went on some kind of live. All I heard was, if you have an opinion that differs from mine, you're going to get blocked because I don't want to hear it. And that's why all you can do is leave the dislike because the majority of y'all are blocked already for a reason. Now I do have a confirmed report that this is the same kind of mother that you will hang out with at the bar and she gonna run that mouth and start some kind of drama and ass bull and then she's gonna run to the bathroom and hide and tweet out that she handled her business when the reality is she's hiding, pissing on herself while you're out there getting your kneecaps busted and hauled off to jail. We all know one and yeah I said it. So we are at the beginning of June. Most of the reactors have spoken about tapping out, whether due to fear of Amberlynn Reed's health or worry for their own health during a really rough time in the world. And then while that was happening, everyone continues to fight with each other on Twitter. A few days after everyone kind of, I guess, dogpiled on Callie, Callie went on stream to tell her audience that the KKK was targeting her cousin. The KKK and the neo-Nazis are out and I have a cousin who's out here working and there have been people harassing him at his job and when he told his manager, his manager literally looked him dead in the eye and was like, I'm not sure how people asking you these questions is interfering with your job. So essentially, um, I think it was a neo-Nazi or somebody, some people came in and asked him about lynching and if he knew what lynching was and if he would like to be lynched. Fans showed up in droves, donating to her in support of racial equality and whatnot. The nightmare of Hater Nation came on the 4th of June. Amber Lynn Reed tested positive for cancer. She uploaded a heartbreaking video about the diagnosis. So I got my result, my results back, and I do have cancer. I have womb cancer. And so it's uterine cancer. And I know it's my fault. 
The thing is, everyone knew Amberlynn's health being so bad for so long would have consequences. It was a ticking time bomb of not if, but when. But the haters proceeded to post condolences and act like they actually cared about her now. The people who followed these reactors then began to retort negatively to their well wishes to the 500 pound YouTuber. It wasn't going well. The people who made money criticizing a girl to the smallest, minute detail were now playing friendly with her. Amberlynn Reed, their favorite subject, was dying, and they all were abandoning ship at a rapid pace. With Amberlynn Reed's sad diagnosis, the focus pretty much went fully to the haters now. People could pity Amber at this time. Well, kind of. People still did hate her. Sometimes I feel like there will always need to be someone to target from people in these communities. Why focus on your own issues when you can criticize someone else? And now that Amber was off limits, Hater Nation got more Popular YouTuber, Deji's girlfriend, even made a video calling out how rude Hater Nation is around this time. Let her do whatever the hell she wants. Just because you don't have any ambition to do anything in your life apart from reacting to Amberlynn's videos or any other YouTube weight loss channel says more about you than about Amberlynn, so tone it down. And Chantel even got a few punches in at the haters' expense. So there's always been A, I guess I don't I hate to say it because it's so stupid hater nation so it's a bunch of group of reaction channels who I guess have become friends or whatever through mutually disliking myself and Amberlynn Reed I'm sure you a lot of you know who Amberlynn Reed is um, youtuber who is like me in a lot of ways maybe not personality wise but um, we struggle with uh, food addiction, with obesity, health issues, all that, and um, we're treated a lot the same online too by these people, and they think it's funny. Um, they think our struggles are funny, and they think that the way we look is funny, even though a lot of them are obese themselves. You'd think that the final nail in the coffin in Hater Nation would be the main target getting cancer, but you'd be wrong. I'd like to add that the growing hate for Charlie Gold during this time, we are in June of 2020 now, is starting to get to Chantel's head in my opinion. The people who she perceived as bullies were now getting their karma. Fantastic. But like everyone in the story, the person who ruins the person's rise is the person themselves. And the next person to decimate themselves was the gaining ground. The gaining ground jumped back into the center of attention around June 13th. This was because, at least judging from tweets, Callie did a live and called them racist. The gaining ground took to Twitter to deny the allegations. I'm not racist, Callie. Callie's careless use of the word just to justify the fact that I do not like her as a human being is disturbing. As a reminder, she is slandering me on live right now on behalf of a woman who is still in hiding. And I believe Callie denied her supporting Louis Farrakhan as well around this time. As the gaining ground also tweeted out, Hey! At Life of a Free Spirit, are we still playing the by association game? Being homophobic and being anti-Semitic is activism? No. You didn't say, oh, he's cool in passing while not paying attention. He just continued to tweet about her. Here's a funny one. Here's the mob. While at Life Free Spirit stays hiding, counting those super chats, maybe dreaming about getting it on with more Aryan brothers while high-fiving young dumb honey bun for using the n-word. Life continued to try to defend herself from the off-handed comment about Louis Farrakhan on Twitter. Then, I have no idea where this came from, but the gaining ground accused Callie of doxing. He wrote, Just reminder, they doxed me when I said they did. So anytime they mentioned Kiwi Farms, shut them down. From what I understand, what had happened was, the gaining ground accidentally doxxed himself in a screen cap, and not only that, he had a periscope that was easy to find with his docs. It seems like either a hater or Callie dug into information to get dirt on him. I have no idea what's going on anymore, for reals guys. I think after being accused of doxing, Callie decided to then post screenshots of people sending her awful messages. The Instagram account from the messages had the same handle as someone who followed the haters. So Charlie Gold proceeded to do a call out of this rando on Twitter who may or may not have DM'd Callie the n-word. When the person said it wasn't them, Charlie Gold got very short. When the accusing of the random follower of racism didn't work, Charlie Gold then accused the random follower of doxing. Finally, 
Finally, the gaining ground goes live and has his own meltdown about the sort of not really doxing of him. Over 1,000 people are watching this, which is amazing for someone with a channel with less than 20k subs. I believed he had about 11k at the time. But the more interesting live on the situation happened the next day anyways. He streams his crazy stream on June 14th, 2020. In it, he manically speaks on how he was doxed. How did you find this video, Miss Anti-Dox? Miss, we don't dox on YouTube. Miss, you dox me, I bang my cheap wig into a wall to show you how angry I am because doxing is not acceptable. Not acceptable. I know, I sound manic, that's what they're gonna say, but they're all stupid, so who cares? How the Hater Nation had dug up footage of him celebrating the holidays from his personal periscope and how upset he was from the allegations made against him. Um, I was speaking to a gentleman in France who loved my live on periscope, having a good time, and I said, bonjour, ha ha. This creator tweeted that video claiming that I am ignorant making fun of accents. And it just, it's just more, it's another receipt that I'm a racist, which makes zero sense. Someone even had apparently tried to get him fired on Twitter for, I don't even know what his crime was, not liking Charlie Gold, saying Charlie ate at KFC. Do not tell me it's a coincidence that you tweet Periscope videos of me from four years ago. 10 minutes later, your biggest fans tweet my full name and then 10 minutes after that my company is tagged in a tweet my company do you realize what i'm gonna have to deal with on monday my livelihood is at stake here and the gaining ground even managed to imply people were homophobic and anti-semitic against him i will like anybody's videos that does not make me a racist if i'm a racist you are a homophobic anti-semitic person because you Stan for you know who see my Twitter feed. So if we want to play the association game, I'm asking you now, leave me alone, okay? Listen, y'all are calling me a racist for saying go to Chick-fil-A. So I'm not gonna take your racist accusations against Foodie Beauty seriously. I'm not gonna do it. You painted me out as a racist over a Chick-fil-A and a KFC tweet, but you want me to take Foodie Beauty's racism allegations seriously? And that's what I'm saying, you, you demean and you invalidate the word racist when you do crap like that. So no, I'm not, I don't care which videos Foodie Beauty likes. I don't care what videos I like. You don't get to stand for Louis Farrakhan and then tell me what videos I get to like. You don't get to stand for a man who you call an activist who's an open homophobe and anti-Semite and then tell me I can't like a Kate Winslet video. How dare you comment on a Kate Winslet? Well, how dare you stand for an anti-Semite and a homophobe? Also, according to him, they were pedophile accusations against him as well from this drama. And I have real receipts. I've kept everything. And your friends accusing me of being a pet. Do we want to go there? Yes. I'm being accused of being a pet now. A, a pet. A pet. They seem to come from nowhere though. That's kind of what I've noticed, is that people do escalate accusations to see what sticks. Best to say it was manic. Thanks, Misfit, I am suffering because people don't understand how damaging this is to people. They don't understand how damaging baseless accusations are. They think it's a game because they're children. See, I, 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 grew, I grew up right, I grew up correct. I was taught how to respect people, okay? I was taught that if I had a problem with you, I would address you like an adult. I don't play children's games. I don't do defamation, slander, and libel. The man had dealt with seriously messed up allegations on Twitter all day, and he had snapped. I'm not really defending him immensely though. It's really dumb to broadcast yourself while you are at this level of distress. Did your trash queen send you Crippy? <laughs> Did your trash queen send you Crippy? Where's Mac G, is he coming next? Mac G's my other favorite one who sat in a live last night calling Foodie Beauty a racist and then goes to Foodie Beauty's community page and goes, Gaining Round's talking smack about you. And then when I took a screenshot and I tweeted it, oh, he deleted his tweet. She has all her little minions creating all this havoc. Crippy, Mac G, they create all this havoc to destroy my life. Over what? Over what? 
But it gets crazier. Sometime after the manic live stream, where the gaining ground screeches about cyberbullying and suicide. I don't get, I wanted people to be nicer. I wanted them to react nicer. I wanted people to, to recognize that bullying leads to suicide. As somebody who was bullied in high school, beyond belief, I wanted people to understand what that felt like. And I never in a million years thought that being a decent human being, trying to get other people to be decent human beings would lead to this. A new person enters, and this person is a wild card. I'll just call them the crazy Sims lady. They begin claiming that the gaining ground had driven them to attempt that night for some reason. They claimed they spoke out against the haters, got accused of racism, and lost their job from the racist allegations. They had apparently emailed the gaining ground to ask him to defend her against the racist allegations, but he didn't, so they attempted suicide. But it isn't Crazy Sims Lady telling us all of this, it's her husband. This level of crazy should be ignored. But it seems that the gaining ground in her had been friendly before, and she drops all of their DMs of the gaining ground complaining about Hater Nation and Charlie Gold. I don't mean to sound unsympathetic to this woman who allegedly attempted suicide. Just keep listening. The situation escalates weirdly, and Kiwi Farms start following this woman's crazy antics. She even allegedly started calling the gaining ground over and over on a live stream. What a coincidence, Chrissy. How dumb Hey, Alana. <laughs> Hi, Alana. Guess what I have? I have a system that I pay for that unblocks phone numbers. Sugarland, Texas. Keep calling me and the cops are getting called next. Do you understand? You want me to read your number on the air? Area code 832. Is that enough for you? Or should I read the rest? Yeah. Look up trap call. It lets you unblock numbers, you fool and attempted to dox his IP address on her own live stream. It's nuts, and I have no idea why anyone gave her the time of day, but they did. She ended up joining the farms and got herself verified and started dropping fire diss tracks. There's a new sensation. Yeah, it's a new creation. It's called the Haters Nation. While you're out there being a clown and clueless, they're on this website being ruthless. I don't believe any of what she did during this time in the spotlight were real. Moving on from her, her involvement kind of caused me to tune out back when I was following this in real time anyways. The Gaining Ground eventually took down his manic live streams, but Kiwi Farms archived them of course. Sickening, get it, Hater Nation was a mess now, with Chantel standing on the messy landfill of a community in her cheap wig, and laughing at how everyone who critiqued her ended up melting down as badly as she had in the past. <laughs> the criticism of Hater Nation was continuing. Not only the posting channels such as Kate Winslet were making content on it, but there were more credible sources now. For example, a small YouTuber by the name of Introvert Queen made a pretty good video on Charlie Gold this month as well. I feel like Charlie had very good intentions in the beginning when she started her channel. But if you watch her from her original videos to how she was, especially when she was posting like a month ago, two months ago, it's like two completely different people. And again, Charlie Gold is still absent from YouTube. The Gaining Ground would shoot another shot at Charlie around the 17th of the month, accusing Charlie Gold of encouraging physical harm to him and encouraging harassment of him on Twitter. After his community post, Charlie Gold, around the 18th, announced she would be doing a response video to all the stuff the Gaining Ground caused. But before she released the video, she received another big blow. Chikara went on the channel Every Day Fitness to be interviewed. You know, the channel that helped Charlie blow up to spread her anti-obesity message? Not only that, but people in the chat were trying to get the owner of the channel to dish dirt on Charlie's lack of weight loss, which he didn't do. I gotta ask here because, I mean, just to appease people, who shot yeah. me? <laughs> it's, it's hot and heavy Charlie in the comments. Gold. Who's Charlie? Charlie Gold. Oh, that's Charlie Gold. Okay. Yeah. But I can't like I, I I can't discuss her because she's been a client. Um, so, I, I, so I'm I'm not I'm not particularly bothered about talking about her. So it's fine. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, but and people wonder why I can't like I would never discuss 
somebody that's been a, been a client or is a client ever. Like yeah. it would just be not, it would be. Finally, here is the finale of sorts. Charlie Gold finally addressed everything on the 20th of June. She addressed her lack of weight loss, her accelerated cruelty, and her drama causing behavior. Just kidding. She made a video trying to shit on the gaining ground. I'm going to go over this video point by point so you can yourself form your own opinion on whether or not this was a good response to all the criticism she had been receiving before and during her break from the YouTube platform. First, she addressed the drama with her and Chikara over calling her a basset hound. She said she thought people thought that when she said she would drag Chikara, people thought she meant physically. In early May, I had tweeted out something regarding Shakara transformations. In that tweet, I was being petty, but I know I also crossed the line. Unfortunately, in that tweet, a lot of people took it as though I was threatening Shakara transformations by saying drag. That wasn't my intent, and for that, if Shakara took it that way, or if any of my viewers took it that way, I definitely apologize. Because it sounded like to people I was threatening her while calling her names as well. Am I someone who calls names from time to time? Absolutely. Can my pettiness cross the line? Sometimes, absolutely. So for that tweet specifically, especially if it came off like a threat, I definitely apologize to Shakar Transformations. That was not it. Which girl, no one thought you were going to physically fight a bodybuilder. She critiqued the gaining ground as being racially insensitive. There's a specific tweet that ended up setting him off. And he claims the tweet called him a racist. I've seriously had it. It's one thing to make playful jabs at each other, stupid memes of the girls, but doxing kids, excusing doxing kids, making a series of potentially racially loaded insults, and then baiting after picking fights for nearly a week straight? Nah. It was racially loaded, it was racially insensitive, and it was extremely ignorant. He later on went on his live stream to explain it, saying that I live next to KFC or Chick-fil-A. Charlie, that area, literally right behind a Chick-fil-A. Girl, you know what intersection I'm talking about. As a KFC up the road. No, I don't. I'm not even in walking distance of them. Then she addressed the accusations that she docked the gaining ground by saying that she shared the Periscope clip with Callie. If you're going to accuse Callie or myself with being involved with your docs, you need to show proof. Not only did I not dox you or get involved in doxing you, neither did Callie. If you are sticking to the video clip that she tweeted out, trying to say that must be the reason you got doxed later on, that's incorrect. I'm the one who gave her that clip because I know she'd be working on a video. I gave her that clip. I had that clip for a couple of days before I shared it. It's a public social media account. And then claimed doing a joke Asian accent when drinking with friends on a Periscope is bad. And then you went on to say that you were impersonating a French accent because the person who commented said bonjour. Did videos of mine on Periscope from four years ago. That's not true. They said bonjour, and you went on to say if someone Asian was to say that, this is how they would say it. Who's hands smell like she look like cheese? Your bonjour. No, if it was Chinese, I'd be like, bonjour! <laughs> bonjour! So What's back. happening? What's happening? <laughs> well, I What's happening? Wait, I don't understand. How do hands are like mozzarella cheese? I'm not sure why you would blatantly lie about this video clip, but it also shows a pattern of when you are in the wrong, whether it's intentional or not, you rather lie your way out of it. Just like with that clip, I don't believe him mocking that Asian accent was in malice. I don't. I believe he was having a good time with friends, he wasn't thinking, and he did that. Was it racially insensitive? Absolutely. Was it with malice? I don't believe so. Then she showed clips from a stream of calling Chantel racist. At the end of February, that's when my Pigmat video on Chantel was posted. In early March, March 8th specifically, I did a live stream where I also dragged Chantel. Rightfully so, because she was so desperate for support, she would take it from someone who was raped and homo. So I dragged Chantel through that live stream. It doesn't matter that the Fatty Gold channel's gone. This will stay with you for a long time, Chantel. A long time. And she keeps saying, 
I'm not racist. You guys know I'm not racist. And she always looks to the side. Then she just went over the history of her and the Gaining Ground relationship and how that history would imply that the Gaining Ground had no issue with Charlie Gold's behavior. So when I DM'd him, it was a great conversation. We ended up talking about tacos and we moved on. Three weeks later, this started. That's where my confusion has been this whole time. There's never been an exchange that we had that was negative. And if these were his feelings this whole time, that the language that I use, I'm vile, I talk down on these people, I'm this horrible person, I'm not an altar boy without mugshots. And unfortunately for her, I'm an altar boy. I pay my rent, I'm not rent, I pay both my mortgages, two mortgages, correct. I pay my car bills, I pay my insurance, never been arrested. See, my mugshots weren't a problem when you wanted advice. They weren't a problem when you wanted me to mod on your channel. They weren't a problem when you wanted a collab. Charlie expressed that the gaining ground disliking her really confused her. Her opinion of the gaining ground is that he is a liar and a snake. He never added that context to the conversation. You feel I'm a vile person, you feel the language I use is horrible. You didn't feel that way when you thought I was a benefit to you. So at what point did you start to feel that way? Because he made it seem as though he's felt like this for some time. I read the dates of our exchanges. So either you are blatantly lying to your audience because you feel this is something you can run with, this opinion is something that might actually catch on, or you're a snake. You thought this this whole time, but you were willing to put your feelings aside to get ahead on YouTube because I have this platform. You're a snake, you're a clown, and you're a fool. She also addressed the GoFundMe accusations. Even when he set that goal, I was doubtful. It was a huge goal. And he was very passionate about it. He believed in it. I didn't so much believe in it because I didn't see that much money being raised. And guess what? It wasn't. There was only about 600, maybe a little over 600 that was raised. The main person, and this is why I was so hesitant to address it, because then it would involve doxing my uncle. Out of that 600, 500 was donated by my uncle. And unfortunately, he attached his first and last name to it. That's one reason I didn't want to address this, not only because I knew it wasn't true, but I didn't want to put him out there. The rest, the $5 donations, 20, 15, that was my friends and family. I know every single person that donated to that. Not only did we clearly not raise the money, I didn't even raise enough to fly out to Hawaii. So when I realized it wasn't moving, I told Shane, I don't think this is gonna go anywhere. I reached out to my friends and family that donated because again, it was only a few people. And I said, this is not gonna move. I'm gonna talk to Shane about you getting your money back. They simply said, shocker, because they're my friends and family, it's fine. As long as he hands you that money, we don't care. We just want you to live and fight. She continued in the video to imply that people didn't like her cruelty because of who she is and not what she says, implying that her and posting channel, Kate Winslet, are one in the same. This all started based on the notion that the language that I use, how vile and toxic that I am, that's not the case. The main creators who are behind what's happened over the last few weeks, they don't have a problem about what's being said and the words being used. They have a problem with who it's coming from. Because if they had a problem with the words being used, you would be calling out the Kate Winslet channel as well. And she also responded to the claims that she had gotten ruder over time and said that her personality hadn't changed, but instead she had just gotten more comfortable and this was her true personality. For me, becoming more comfortable meant I started to speak more freely. So if you feel my content has gotten more vile or more mean, I wish I could sit here and say to you, I plan to change the way I react. I'm seeing it for the first time. The first thing that comes to my mind, if it has any value or if I think it has any value or if I think it might be entertaining, I just say it. It's the same way I watch any other show. That's why I call them the desperate bedbound. I'm reacting to people who are just okay with making a mockery of their lives on YouTube.
She also talked about why she didn't bring back her weigh-ins, which was partially because Amberlyn Reed hadn't accepted the challenge, essentially, and also that she had decided to change up how she incorporated weigh-ins on her channel. But I should have probably been more vocal about it in a different video or maybe in the beginning of a different video. The main reason I didn't stick to my weigh-ins, even though Amberlyn did not acknowledge the challenge whatsoever, is because when my weight started to slow down, I started to panic. I always in my mind had the idea that if Amberlynn stuck to this, I'm gonna lose. She didn't accept the challenge, so I mean, kinda helped me a little bit. But if she had accepted the challenge, I would have lost. The problem I had, even though she didn't accept the challenge, is my weight started to slow down in a way that I did not recognize, in a way that I don't feel like matched the effort I was putting out. So off of camera, I was trying to figure out how to get the scale to move again in a bigger way. On camera, I think because I didn't address it a different way out of the live stream, it looked as though I was avoiding the weigh-ins, which I understand those opinions. I understand that people think I haven't lost weight. I have. I'm not 310 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds. But what I had decided I spoke about in that live stream, unfortunately not enough people saw it. Even though I plan to stick to what I talked about in that live stream moving forward, to put all that to rest, first week of July, I'll weigh in. I don't have a problem. And also said that while she had been absent, she was dealing with events in her personal life. And then apologized to her followers. So I just want to apologize again to you guys that this got so out of hand. And mostly just blame the gaining ground for everything. Have your opinions, do what you want, but don't do it because you see an opportunity. Don't do what he did. Even me, I have to figure out another way to interact with other content creators where this doesn't happen again. There was more in the video. I'll link it below so you can watch it in full. But the important part here, and why I think this was kind of a nail in the coffin in the golden age of Hater Nation, is that nobody liked this video. The video got ratioed, Charlie Gold lost a few thousand subscribers, and people came in to analyze and respond to how bad her comeback video was. Much like she and many haters have done to the subjects of their videos. Charlie Gold essentially handed Chantel and Amberlynn Reed probably their first win on the internet with this video. Charlie's videos were then ratioed for a while after this video as well, as she returned to her regular reaction to fat girl content. Eventually, the ratio evened out, but so far, her views are at a fraction of what they once were. This is a kind of rise, minor fall, and eventual decay story. Foodie Beauty's win was also kind of short-lived, because then she called Charlie Gold, Charlie Cole, which, uh, that girl needs to think before she speaks. Not only that, Foodie Beauty received a super chat recently from this channel's favorite nut, Shani for Christ. This became another way to imply Chantel is racist, despite Chantel saying in the clip that she was not familiar with Shani's content. But I'm not defending Chantel completely. It's obvious that everyone in this community's worst enemy is themselves. People eventually returned to reacting to Amberlynn Reed as well, and things came back to normal. But I think Hater Nation being a big thing that Charlie Gold once brought it to less than a year before, I think that's over for at least now. Especially because now all Charlie does is make video after video, responding to everything Chantel does. A year ago, she said she would never respond to Chantel again and didn't want to roll in the mud with a pig. Well, the Sovereign did a response to Chantel's terrible comment, which was, in my opinion, the best response to the cool thing I've seen so far. Don't ever speak on Charlie again. Just don't. I'm telling you, do not do any more commentary on Charlie Gold because you're bad at it. You are bad at it. Chantal's job is to put crap into her mouth. There should be no crap coming out of your mouth. So here's a proposition for you, Chantal. I will personally mail you a pie, okay? Send me a P.O. box, your address if you feel comfortable. I will have it, I will have, I won't even get a store-bought one. I will send you a fresh baked, perfectly made, delicious pie. I'll spend a significant amount of money on it. And every time you feel the need to let crap come out of your mouth, eat a piece of the pie because that's that's what you're good at. You should keep your job right there in the mukbang community. And many of the Sovereign's audience reflects what is going on right now, that both Charlie and Foodie Beauty deserve each other. Before we close this, I wanted to get a word from one of the people valued highly in the community. Excuse me, Toad McKinley, can I get a few comments before this ends?
Hey there, Hater Nation. It's been a while. I bet you were starting to think you'd never see me again after I went out for a pack of smokes all those months ago. Look, I know I should have been there to hold your hand and tell you it's all gonna be okay when the big bad foodie beauty decided to start firing shots back over the bow at you, but in all honesty, I thought you were adults capable of handling it yourselves. So, late as I may be, I'm here now to offer my help. Chantal isn't a racist, she isn't a bigot, and she isn't a homophobe. She's a harmless, impulsive clown here to provide everyone with free entertainment. And I know from first-hand experience that you can quite easily make thousands of dollars just by reading her Kiwi Farms thread and cracking a few jokes at her antics. I guess what I'm trying to say is that all of you need to pour yourselves a piping hot mug of gravy and settle down. Or don't. I don't really care. Hasta la vista. Thanks, Toad. I'd also like to thank Toad for helping edit part of this. Now, do I think Chantel and Amberlynn Reed are evil, problematic YouTubers? Do I think Hater Nation are a bunch of evil bullies? Well, that's not the point of the video. I just wanted to give all the details so everyone can form their own opinions. I am not trying to cancel or say anyone is anything. I am merely just a teller of internet lore. Everyone here is crazy. I mean, the anti-haters could have their own mini video. <sighs> I'm kind of scared of four of my mentions after I drop this. Closing out. Why did I make this video? Well, I had been watching this community from the outside for a while now, and I love the show. I didn't even get to a bunch of other drama, like Booty Beauty saying she was gonna run over Charlie Gold with her walker, and Charlie Gold acting like it was an actual threat. The haters planning a trip to visit Chantel in Canada, and Chantel having a freak out over that. Michael B. Petty and Charlie Gold flipping out on some randos on Twitter for talking shit on them in their Discord. Also, there were weird accusations that the gaining ground was grooming people because he was in everyone's DMs to talk smack about Charlie Gold. Also, there was Chantel getting a channel called Glory Gloria taken down because the channel made videos calling her a smelly fat over and over again, according to Kiwi Farms. This caused all the haters to get mad at Chantel for getting this channel taken down for bullying. Oh, another thing. There's a girl out there who's claiming Chantel secretly does explicit fat feeder content. And then everyone started standing this girl, including Life of a Free Spirit. But then it turned out that this girl said the N-word a bunch of times on her YouTube channel, but they are still standing her. And another new hater is someone who made a video, I don't know what her name is, stating that her ex-boyfriend used to be a paid feeder of Foodie Beauty. But that life of a free breeze fella, she went down there and she's like, hey, hit me up. Not then bother enough to even scroll down or up or whatever, just a little bit to realize what's about a minute of this person's videos. And uh, that N-word was said with a hard R and several, several times in one video. Son of a Even I was sitting there like, but let Chantel say Cole one time or three. <laughs> you know, I mean, damn. I love it. If you want to follow the drama, seriously, sub to all of them. Please don't attack them or report them either. Just enjoy the ride. Hater Nation News Network is a great place to get 10 minute updates on all the drama too. And the host, Belinda, unrelentlessly makes fun of everyone while also being level headed. And uh, she went off on a tangent and she said some racist ass shit. I don't care who you are, okay? That was racist. Next up on Hater Nation News is DC Media Girl, who apparently thinks that Alana from Shakara Transformations does not have a right to say anything about that on-program situation feller's ability to one-throat 12 McDonald's cheeseburgers because Alana is not a doctor. Apparently, DC Media Girl thinks that the only people who can react or have an opinion on fatties is fellow fatties. There's also Kate Winslet and small channel Leo the Lard that do drama videos about the community. I'd like to add though, considering how fast people melt down in this community, something might happen to them while I edit this. I mean, the Sovereign even had her own spat with Kiwi Farms that made her look not good. 
that I didn't mention here. There's not only entertainment to get from this. There is probably a lesson to be learned somewhere here as well. A lesson that Charlie Gold most likely learned the hard way. Nobody cares about your petty Twitter fights. Also, perhaps if you're going to try to be on some kind of moral high ground, maybe do those things you promised to do, like weigh in and stop rolling around in the mud with a pig. Also, I think an important lesson for everyone to know is that you can think certain people, such as Chantal and Amber Lynn, to be in the wrong, but you don't have to side with everyone with that same opinion. You don't need to pick a team. Life doesn't work that way. You can be critical of people on any side, but ultimately, even disregarding all of that, it was weirdly about ethics and fat girl commentary. Okay, that's the end. Let me know your thoughts. I tried my best to show every side and be unbiased, but if I got anything wrong, let me know and I'll correct it in the pinned comment. I'd like to thank my patrons listed here and anyone who made it through this long video. Thank you. If you want to support content on internet lore, please consider becoming a patron or even just subscribing to my channel. I'd especially like to thank my $20 and over patrons. $20 and over patrons get special art by me. So, uh, yeah, um, that's the end. Suffer lightly.